That's Great offensive gift. to Trojans. PFT. Yeah. Oh, you're there offensive you to Trojans because your dad because your dad should have worn one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> On today's part in my take, we have Andrew Schultz, the comedian, hour and a half interview. It was one of those interviews that I took notes beforehand, and I don't think I read a single one of them. We just we hit every topic you could ever imagine, from the Knicks to Jeffrey Epstein to Alex Jones, all over the place. Great, great interview. We have Who's Back of the Week and Mount Rushmore of Worst Gifts to Receive. Thank you to an AWL for that. Um, great show. And before we do that, we're brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Summer is full of official events like weddings, graduations, and annual 4th of July barbecues. But everyone knows the best part of summer are the unofficial ones. This summer, Coors Light is the official beer of everything unofficial, celebrating those moments that truly make summer chill. I'm thinking unofficial uh, moments this summer. How about when you're sitting on the back porch Maybe drinking a Coors Light, playing some horse racing, watching some baseball. That's unofficially a great moment in summer. There's only one beer that's literally made it chill. That's Coors Light. The mountains and the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. Summer chill starts with Coors Light. Make the most of your summer with a chance to win exclusive chill merch, fun local experiences, even a trip to New York, Chicago, or L.A. Enter to win at CoorsLight.com slash take. Sweepstakes ends uh, August 15th, 2022, uh, game ends September 6th, 2022, 50 U S states and DC 21 plus void where prohibited for rules. Visit CoorsLightSummer.com. No purchase necessary. Celebrate responsibly Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Thank you to Coors Light, the best beer in the world. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Coors Light, the best beer ever created. Today is Monday, July 25th. Oh, Patty the Batty. Oh, Patty the Batty. Oh, Patty the Batty. <laughs> That's it. That's the start because Patty the Batty and Mo- uh, Meatball Molly, our friends, our colleagues, that was the, the, that was the sports moment of the weekend. Both of them showing out in England. Dave there with his wig on, catching Meatball Molly. Unbelievable. Great UFC. I love them so, so much, the two of them. I don't know, like, it's weird to have people that you uh, know personally and care for fighting in the octagon because every moment feels like the scariest moment ever. But that was awesome. And that is the that is the lead of the show today. Yeah, the closest that we've ever come to that is is when Hank stepped into the octagon and uh, and Billy stepped in. It's not really an octagon. It was a squared circle in the boxing ring. And watching people that you care about actually get into fights, like that's as close as I've been to a parent just worrying sick about my children. I was. It's it's nerve wracking. It's almost like relief when they win. But the way that Molly and oh, Patty I had to fight home, someone that actually fought back. Yeah. Well, you fought against Tex. I'd say like Jose Canseco is probably a pretty comparable amount. Like if Jose Canseco actually connected with a shot against Billy, Billy could have died. Would have been a real shame. But there was still that like same level of worry that we had. But the way that that Molly and Patty won, they're so fun to watch. Like Molly just throwing back elbows at people. And then they just they're so likable. Like after the fight, Molly just crying tears of joy, basically getting hammered drunk on fireball or whatever in the stands. And then Patty taking the mic and after teabagging his opponent, like he said that he would, just being like, hey, let's talk real quick about mental health because I don't want to bury any of my mates. So come cry on my shoulder. Give me a big hug. Liverpool is back, guys. Yes. Yes. It was an awesome, awesome day. Um, it was also great. Like the UFC when it's in a foreign country and you get like the five o'clock UFC fight is just it's there's something really cool about it because you're like, oh, I should be like fighting off sleep. It should be midnight right now, uh, trying to stay awake on a pay-per-view card. No, we got to see it at five o'clock in the afternoon. 
afternoon. I had a pep in my step after that. I love them too, both so, so much. I hope they both come back to New York soon so we can have them both back on the show. And yeah, that was, that was it. Thank you to both of them too, because other than Jake calling a PLL game and working in a clone, shout out Jake Mm -hmm. and, um, Red Bull cheating again to get uh, Max a win. There wasn't much sports this weekend. Like, there's baseball, and then Patty the Batty and, and Meatball Molly saved sports this weekend. So we appreciate it from them. Yeah, I mean, especially, like, if you're a sports writer out there, my thoughts and my prayers are with you because not only is there nothing to write about whatsoever, but Bruce Springsteen seats are now $4,000. So it's yes. a real tough time to be a scribe. Yes, the, the the biggest story I had was the the Bears unveiled their new um, uh, helmets. It's now cool for every team. Like this is one of those situations where the NFL was like, "Yeah, we're we're letting everyone do multiple shells this year, so you get alternate uniforms, alternate helmets." And then the Bengals revealed theirs, which were incredible. The Jets actually are pretty cool, but that doesn't mean every team needs to do a alternate helmet. And it, and and the Bears kind of were the first team to show up and be like. Oh yeah, not every team needs to do this. I don't know why they had to be Syracuse. Uh, no, no, no disrespect to you, Jake, but Syracuse is a trash football program, and I don't know why they had to do that. And um, yeah, like historic franchises should just keep with their regular helmets because there's no reason we're we're not the Jaguars, even though we are like in terms of playing ability. We're not the Jaguars. We don't need an alternate helmet. That, that isn't and that you don't have to just check that box just because it's available to you. Yeah. So I'm mad about that. There's certain franchises. The word swag should never get thrown out when it comes to the Bears. The Bears are a team that like they're Yes, they're very historical. But even when they're good, they're just like they're more physical than you. They're never swaggy. They're not a swaggy team. Right. And the all orange. Yeah, it's, you're right. It's like a mix of Syracuse and Illini like combined into yeah. one and nothing about that screams excitement to me. It is going to be no. against the commanders and the greatest Thursday night game that this podcast has ever seen. So I'm happy to see that if I'm just going based off vibes off those helmets alone, I feel like that is a vibe where it's like the coach Eberflus, he's going to lose two challenges. The wind is going to blow the ball off the kicking tee at least twice in the course of the game. But mercifully, the game is going to be over really quickly. It's going to be one of those that basically has a running clock the entire time because both teams are just going to run the ball and nothing exciting is going to happen. Yeah, the orange helmets, if they wore blue jerseys with the orange helmets, they'd look a little bit better. But the orange helmets are a special teams um, error, like a a drastic change in momentum. Um, And then Eberflus is going to try to wear something orange, an orange visor or hat, and it's going to look even more comical. Um, it's Mickey Mouse. It's 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 candy ass. So I don't again, I don't know why they had to do that. Just wear your regular uniforms. You have some of the best uniforms in sports. Like, why would you do that? But again, this is this is a late July problem where I, I had to drop some perspective on people. Like, look, we can all disagree about helmets. Some people thought they were fire. That's fine. I don't. But the fact that we're arguing about helmets means we're that much closer to football and we can handshake on that. Yeah, the only the only real real problem I have with it, I mean, it it does look kind of candy ass, but it just makes me wish Andy Dalton was still on the Bears because he would look sick yeah. in those helmets. Yes, he would. He would. Um, I'm trying to think what other things. Oh, I guess Hank, do you want to address the fact that LeBron might have cursed your baseball team because, I, like, I've seen on the that's what that's what some people are saying. LeBron might have cursed the Red Sox because since he said Why are you that, bring him uh, up all the time, Big Cat. Yeah, you're right. All right, fine. So we want to address the fact that I I just seen on Sydney Twitter Sweeney cl- also yes, didn't curse the Red Sox. I, I've seen clips of just some of the most ridiculous plays happening in this Red Sox Blue Jays series that like b- plays that are plays that are basically like we'll we, we won't see plays that bad when we're watching the Little League World Series in Williamsport in like three weeks. Yeah, it was fourteen to three, and then all you know people online got to do the oh football score football score. Then it was twenty-seven to three. <laughs> Hate to see and it. Almost, and almost. Did you see twenty-eight to three? Did you see this, Jake? It was. There's a scoregami account for baseball. It was for they, a moment going to be the first scoregami in like twenty years. It happens it like though. once. Every, yeah, once every like twenty years. There's a baseball scoregami. Yeah, devastating. I remember it was like Rangers Orioles, like thirty to three, like a decade ago. I don't remember specifically, but I think those are the two teams involved. So. Yeah, you got to cherish yeah. the moments, but we just missed out here. 
I also don't like they were they were there's got to be a certain level if you're a baseball manager where it's like if you get down I don't know let's call it 15 runs then you just stop using real pitchers and let yeah. you Correct. know whatever Correct. player that wants to fucking pitch throw them in there because they were they had like relievers they're on 25 mm-hmm. yeah yeah it was bad there was yeah. I remember that Orioles game because that was an ultimate Tim Kirkchen game where he was just he was, for the next two days he was finding out new stats that happened in that game that hadn't happened in like 125 years of baseball and his voice was just breaking he sounded like he was going to cry on the air when he discovered that the pitcher in that game got a save somehow even though it was 30 to 3 like I, I love those those moments for Tim Kirkchen where they just splash him everywhere and they're like here's a weeping Tim Kirkchen to discuss the beauty of baseball u- uniqueness again Yes, yes. And then the only other story from baseball, there's two others. Aaron Judge has been mashing, race to 62. I want everyone to get involved in that because it does. Look, I'm a a pro steroids guy, so I I definitely think Barry Bonds is the best player of all time, and I also think his records stand. But there should be like an extra enthusiasm if someone can hit 62, just knowing that we're not in the steroid era anymore. So it's like what what better way to get people into baseball – than having a home run race again. So let's pretend this is just, he's going for 62. He's trying to break Roger Maris's record. I'm in for that. Like, let's get excited about some dingers. Well, it's the Yankee what's record. The, what's the record? That's though? the thing. It's the Yankee record. So that's the, yeah, that's yeah. all it is. Yeah. But it's still, no, but I'm I think saying, it's still important because you have the Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa. You have those, which we do acknowledge because everybody was taking stories at the same time, but there's still like that little mystique around the number 61. So I, Correct. I, I, I'm fine with, with rooting for Aaron Judge to get that. The only thing is he might be a national. That might, he might be trade bait for Juan Soto. In which case, <laughs> Hank is, you, got, you got that short right field porch, and he's not going to have that anymore. That's true. Hank is shaking his head. He just doesn't want to be excited about – like I'm, I'm trying. I am basically right. fishing at the bottom of the ocean. Try, I just pulled up like one of those spineless jellyfish – or not all jellyfish are spineless, right? One of those worms that are at the bottom of the ocean. And I'm like, look, here it is. Aaron Judge, 62 home runs. What else are we going to fucking talk about in the end of July? You're right. And you're like, no, throw it back. Well, yeah, I know. If I was being sourpuss, I'm not. I'm I'm a sweet dick. But, like, I would say (laughs) that you can't acknowledge the Barry Bonds one and then also be like he's chasing a record because – which one's the The Yankee record? But you can't. Yankee Yankee record, record. yeah. That's what what you're going for. The Yankee record. The Yankees. Well, yeah, he's trying I mean, to earn his pinstripes. Twenty-seven rings, Hank. Yeah, and sure. then um, the other thing was uh, the the Braves caught the Mets, so Frank was right. Hashtag Frank <laughs> was right yet again. I mean, that's it's. It, I think the I think the Mets are right now a half game up on the Braves in the NL East. That's exactly so, what he said was going to happen. But big he news, said it though. was going to happen, and it's happening. The Mets the Mets got uh, Max Scherzer as a free agent coming back to the team, and they're they're getting Jacob Degrom, another big free agent coming back to the team this no, year. I'm trade. sure it's a deadline trade. It's a deadline, deadline trade. trade. And I'm, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure, you know, mid season free agent, Jake DeGrom. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that he'll be able to pitch the re- rest of the season and won't have any more injury issues. So I think the Mets are yeah. still good. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they'll be fine. I'm sure this won't just implode in, in fantastic fashion. Um, okay. Should we do who's back? Cause we have a very long, very, very good interview with Andrew Schultz. What are you going to say, PFT? I have a beach idea, so it's not a drunk idea because it's like mildly buzzed. You know that feeling you have like three beers on a beach and you're kind of in the zone. Your brain starts cooking a little bit. I had a beach idea that I was discussing here the other day. Um, let me know what you guys think about it. It's it's a spray tan booth, but it's got sunscreen, spray sunscreen in it. So you just walk through it. They set up like a kiosk and you walk through it on your way out to the beach. You pay like 10 bucks and then you turn around like you're in Tony Hawk. Your entire body gets coated in sunscreen. I feel like for kids, especially if you got kids, this is like a godsend of an invention. 10 it's, bucks. It's, it's the it's the mister like the, yeah. the spray mister. Just walk right through the, the portal. It's the one that the Broncos had where they kept their entire team safe from COVID because they walked through like this, this spray, this spray fan before they went out onto the practice field. Hank, you think 10 bucks is too much? Have you seen the cost of sunscreen these days? Are you living in your elite bubble? Because sunscreen is mega expensive. I just don't wear sunscreen like a real man. And when I do, I just slap it on my back. How I didn't realize I thought 10 bucks would get you at least a, a bottle or two. Do you got to get naked? I think it's a, it's like a bottle, yeah. Billy, by the way, is um, – we don't know where Billy is. He's in a hospital, I think. 
Um, Billy texted the group this morning at 8.30 in the morning being like, what time are we recording, guys? Something we had agreed to on Thursday. And uh, that was just a pretty good sign of Billy has big plans this weekend. And uh, part of my take might be interrupting his plans because no, I don't know that where he I'm, is right it's now. Better, he won't, it's better to he's, double check we, than not check. <laughs> Billy, well, Billy is recording listen. from an yeah. undisclosed location. That's like where they found Saddam Hussein is where Billy's at yeah. right now. We, we asked him where he was. He said, not a house. Yeah. So I don't know what the fuck that means. And there's a phone, a, a landline phone behind him, and it looks like an elevator. So like I said, I'm just going to go with hospital unless he wants to tell us a little bit. Look, more. This all- is like where Tom... You remember when Tom Hanks hosted SNL and everybody was like, oh, he's in an Australian prison and they're just yeah, CGI in the background? Yeah. That's what's happening with Billy Football right now. We're all working yeah. remote. I'm working remote. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you were able to, to show up. That was, yeah, I, we were joking when you when you lost internet connection a minute ago because you're in a hospital again, which you'd think would have good internet uh, connection. We were joking that when you texted at 8.30 in the morning being like, what time are we recording? I think you, Sneaky, were hoping we'd be like 15 minutes from now so that your whole day was clear. No. We should have just been like, we're recording right now. Let's go. I'm ju- <laughs> you know, just got to double check. Sorry for trying to be responsible. Where are you? Just say where forever. you are. If you guess, just if say you, where, if where you, you are. guess where I am, I'll tell you if I'm there. Give us right. a little more of the room. Okay. All right. So you're in a dorm. Is this a dorm? Where the fuck? Dorms that have Is corded a, phones, do they? We could. Yeah, you know, it's in like a there. hotel wa- hallway. Go watch where on YouTube. We, we can. You know what? If someone, if one of the AWLs guesses correctly where I am, I'll retweet them. Okay. Well, this this is oh, like, that's huge. Massive. Yeah. What a guy. <laughs> this is. This, this is like the um the remember that documentary? Don't fuck with cats. Like someone needs to figure out when someone that will. phone was oh, made. Yeah. And who and 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 who like had it put into their hotel slash hospital slash dorm, and then we can go from there. I think Billy's I trust in, the AWLs with this with this type of stuff. I think yes. Billy's on board the live tour jet. I think the Saudis have, have successfully co opted Billy to be their new mouthpiece. <laughs> Look, yeah, he, I actually, you know what? That is, he is giving off cruise ship vibes. That yeah. is more just like what, what is what is sketchy enough that he doesn't feel comfortable saying like that's yeah. what I'm trying to like get at like. Most people would just be like, "Oh, I'm at this place." Yeah, and just say, and no not one a would house. care. I just not yeah. a house. I planned something a long time ago, and <laughs> why are you so <laughs> fucking weird? <laughs> just you just can't be normal for anything. Sorry, are but you like planning what? Are you in an insane asylum? No, like are you in Stranger no, Things? No. Anyway, who's back of the week? I got a good one. Uh, are you <laughs> are you training? Are you training to be a Navy SEAL with Tiger Woods at his compound? Sure. What is this place? All right, go ahead, Billy. Start with who's back of the week. Give us your who's back who's of the week. Who's back of the week? The- uh, by the way, by the way, before we do that, we just mentioned the live tour plane. Uh, little little tickler for the takeys on Wednesday. I've been smiling ever since we taped the takeys on Thursday. It's coming out on Wednesday. I think it's our best takeys yet. It's such Without a fucking a great episode. It it's is a gr- such a great episode. So get excited for Wednesday. And no spoilers. Don't spoil. Try not to tweet spoilers. Uh, until people have a chance to listen because I'm st- like I said, I'm still buzzing from it. Like I've, I've actually had moments where I've thought back and like giggled to myself about what happened during the takeies. It's a great it's a show hot take. with a oh. fantastic ending. We do sp- a little spoiler here. We do spend 30 minutes honoring Eileen Gu for her uh, performance and her contribution to the Chinese ski team. So mm-hmm. uh, I will say yes. that as just a little advertisement for the show. Mm-hmm. I will say, too, I don't like to over-advertise, and you know, I could be wrong, but I will say that the Blake of the Year competition is better than last year's. Yes, by far. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we have, a, we have a lot better of a Blake of the Year competition with two Blakes uh, being on the show. Um, all right, so, Billy, go ahead. Take it away. Who's back of the, the week? The troops. Um, Memes and I competed in a charity lacrosse game uh, on Thursday night uh, for Shootout for Soldiers, a great cause, a great charity. Uh, it's 24 hours of lacrosse. The game's played every hour. And all proceeds and donations and signups go towards uh, great causes for veterans and active duty. And they had a record. Where can I sign up? They had a record breaking uh, event. They raised a fifth of a million dollars, which is awesome. And uh, okay. that's, you're again, <laughs> so you're capable of being normal. <laughs> yeah, $200,000. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> and How it was a great Saturday, event. Billy? The whole barstool, the whole uh, a bunch of guys at barstool showed up, and we had a barstool team, and it was really fun. And it was the first time playing an organized sport for a lot of us since like high school and college, and it was awesome. If memes wants great. to chime I'm in, I'm glad that cool. you got to cosplay as a troop again. Yeah. I got a challenge That's a great cause. coin. I got a challenge coin, uh, so I could whip that out on other military members if they have their challenge coin on them. So, kind of, kind of got a stamp of approval. You are, nice. you are literally now like the bit is over, and you are actively stealing valor. I yes. Know, it, it got, Whoa! Are you wearing like a wait? Are you wearing a button-down shirt, Billy? It's it's more of like a <laughs> wait. This is getting even weirder. Wait, wait, I, I needed to hear how that was going to end. Uh, yeah, it's more of like a what? It's more. It's like athletic gear. I, I got like oh, yeah. with buttons. Stand up real quick. I don't need to stand up. We you not see the fist. No. Okay, yeah. I, or he's got a kilt on. He's in Scotland. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's like, remember, like, did anyone watch the Today Show where Matt Lauer was like, where's Matt Lauer? That's not cool anymore. <laughs> Just remember. <laughs> yeah, Billy, do you have a button on your desk that, that locks it from the inside right now? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> Wait, but Jesus also, Christ. that are you telling me that's not a button? Like, those that shirt doesn't it, have buttons on it? There's buttons. So it okay. is a button now. Yes. So it's a button down. Yes. <laughs> Okay, that would have been an answer that we could have we would have accepted yes when I asked, is that a button down? <laughs> let's let's see the shoes. Show feet. You want to see my shoes? Yeah. yeah. Well, and why aren't you Although, standing up? You're definitely nude from the waist down. Okay, so he is dressed up. He is dressed up. Those are his nice sneakers that he only puts on for, for <laughs> big occasions. All right, Hank, go ahead. Why don't you give us your who's back? Uh, my who's back of the week is just the classics. Um, it is that time of year. There are no sports going on. So when when in doubt, this is, you know, things like Mount Rushmore come along. That's a classic. And then uh, our colleague, J.J. Reddick, has got himself in a classic debate that is, you know, taking over Sports Center probably for the next week. And he, you know, cl again, classic take. He said Jerry West played with plumbers. And then Jerry West came back and was like, what have you ever accomplished in your career, buddy? You've only averaged like 12 points a game and never won a, a championship. So just a it's just a classic debate it's just one of those things like you yeah. go on sports center this week there's nothing going on what what is Stephen a talking about it's it's jerry west in the plumber era and and like how current players would would play then well Stephen a yeah. smith is but i do talking, think i do think anything because he's taking the entire fucking month of august off with a shoulder injury because he's not man enough to go on the air in august and talk about sports this is this is actually what really separates the good take smiths from the bad ones and from the pretenders like this is a soft move by Stephen A. Smith to just not show up for an entire month. Like Greeny can't mm -hmm. do it all. And then the other one I saw, which I, I kind of disregarded because once I saw who wrote it, it was it was like a top top headline on Barcel was just Aaron Rodgers isn't a top three quarterback with with the rankings of quarterbacks, but it was from Stephen Che. So that's not even. I no, agree he, with him. He, he was just he was just yeah. He was just yeah. kind of doing his thing. I agree with him. I agree. With him. Again, He's doing when in doubt, rankings. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, I agree with him. No matter what, I, I back him. He's my guy. Yeah. Great take yeah. by him. Just a good just a good week for for old takes. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, that that is it is true. Like this is prime, let's rank quarterbacks, tier tiering of, of the quarterbacks for no reason mm -hmm. error. Like th this is the perfect time for it in in this part of the summer. You know what we should do? We should we should tier kickers. Make a make a debatable list of the best kickers in the NFL, or like just head coaches in general. Tearing head coaches, I feel like we get some good engagement. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that next week. I like that. I like that. Um, all right, PFT, your who's back? Uh, my who's back of the week is robots. Robots are Ooh. back. I don't know if you guys saw this. I know that you uh, you guys are, are big chess fans, but there was a uh, a giant chess tournament that took place in Russia over the weekend and had some of the best players. And over in Russia, like they farm them young. They groom you to be like a chess superstar from the time you're like two years old. And so one of the best chess players in the under nine division was playing. He's like on a fast track to be one of the best in the entire world. And they had him play against a robot. They made like a chess playing robot and the robot broke the child's finger in the middle of the game. Like it reached across Whoa. the board grabbed its finger and then just snapped it. And then the president of the Moscow Chess Federation said the robot broke the child's finger. This is, of course, bad. 
And so the, the, kid had, <laughs> the kid had to be taken away by like three people, like it's mom. And then two bystanders had to like pry the fingers of the robot off the kid. This is just the most Russian story ever. And it just goes, goes to show that I am anti-robot and I've been anti-robot for quite some time. Even when Boston Dynamics puts out their cute little dogs, they're capable of getting kicked over and standing back up. I just want everybody to stay woke out there and join me on the team of being anti-robot. Bro, I want to be anti-robot. I want to be anti-robot, but I can't be a hypocrite because I literally just said that I back Stephen Che. So um, there's some robots. If they rank Aaron Rodgers out of the top three, I can get behind. Bro. Well, if the robot has a significant amount of Martin Luther King autograph memorabilia, then I'm okay with that robot. But yes, I, I need yes. to make sure that they're not racist first. Bro, what if the yes. robot was like trying to win and it like glitched and it was like the best way to win isn't on the chessboard? It's break the hand that plays the chess. Yeah, the kid had to quit. The robot won. Yeah. So like the robot yeah. will now learn that violence is an acceptable answer when it comes to chess. So this I, is how it yeah. starts. Did you see I, whoever 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 said the pen is mightier than the sword was full of shit. They just didn't have good swords. I I blogged mm -hmm. this on Friday. Did you guys see the the Boston Dynamics robot that was shooting a gun? Yeah, it's a terrible, terrible shot. Bad shot. Looked like PFT playing COD. It was that's oh. terrifying. It was terrifying. Oh damn! Damn! Hey, <laughs> fucking roasted. You know how much I care about Warzone. Uh, yeah, yeah no, it I, sounds like you do. <laughs> no, I can, I can I'm a, tell. I'm a fucking pilot, bitch. If it was a, if it was an AIM 120 AMRAM or an AIM 9X Sidewinder, I put that thing right into your face. I don't give a shit about shooting machine gun. I got fucking I mean, laser guided listen, missiles. Uh, your reaction to that joke says you might care a little bit. No, I just want Hank to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. My who's back of the week is uh, one of my favorite bears of all time, Brian Urlacher. Um, I've said this before, but if you're on the internet, you get got. Brian had, he got got and it was, it was bad. So I don't know if you guys saw this, but the, the PGA tour tweeted and it's spelled T U O R. And also on the avatar, it says parody uh, <laughs> tweeted breaking Jim Nance reportedly joins live for a four year contract. In a statement to the press, he said, I feel like I'm the best and I want to be paid like it. He also added, goodbye, friends. And uh, Erlacher responded, damn right, and you should be compensated for being the best. Maybe they will televise live events now with the best announcer, hashtag live golf. And it was like, <laughs> okay. I mean, just because it was not – it's like – not only that you got duped by a parody, but you like came out as like the number one live golf fan. Um, <laughs> but you know what? You don't need you don't need to be the smartest guy online to be a Hall of Fame linebacker. So I'm just going to remind people that that the internet's a tricky place, and it's not fair that people are throwing parodies in Brian Erlacher's feed because that's just not it's not right. It's not right. It's also I'm pretty sure Jim Nance is paid like the best because he is the best. Yes. I'm pretty sure <laughs> he's, like he's compensated. <laughs> Very handsomely. So Ur Urlacher just without there's no real reason for him to like self-identify as being a Saudi stand, but he took the bait and stepped in it. But it's good he, to know though, like it, this actually might end up being in his favor where he might get an offer from the Live Tour to come like cover golf for them. Yeah, to run their social media account. That'd be yeah. great. Yeah, good good the goodbye friends though part. <laughs> like that. If it, if the if the parody marking on the literally says it's watermarked parody on the avatar or the misspelling of the word tour wasn't the giveaway, goodbye friends should have been the giveaway. But again, it's not right that people are retweeting this stuff into Brian Urlacher's uh feed, so I'm going to defend him on this one even though he was trending for like all of Saturday night because of it. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, an un unforced error. Yeah. Yeah, my who's back of the week is making fun of yourself. So last week, Ooh. the talk of the NFL world was how Leonard Fournette gained weight. He then responded by posting a meme of an overweight guy in a suit with his face uh, on it. Camp in two days. Love y'all. I'm off. And it went viral. So uh, he's leaning into the joke a little bit, which uh, is cool. It's funny. Yeah. How, yeah. How, it was a funny Jake, picture. How how was uh, PLL? You did a great job. You were on ESPN2. Did you say it was a success all around? Didn't get canceled? Thank you. Yes, didn't get canceled. That's always the first big check mark. I thought it went well over all a few things I'm going to beat myself up over. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was good. I hopefully will get more opportunities either with them or more sports coming in the future. We'll see. What was the Diet Coke situation like in the press box? Uh, didn't see any Diet Coke, but – 
I wasn't looking out for Diet Coke. I'm a water only guy. And what about the spread? Yeah. They have cold cuts. I didn't eat before. I had a turkey sandwich four hours before game time. So nice. Safe. And now, safe. Plain, safe. The plain lays. Yeah. No chips. The Pretzels. the most important question, Jake. What, what is? Give us one of the things you're going to beat yourself up for, so we can then bring it up to you. <laughs> so the uh, the guy I was working with, Ryan Boyle, is one of the best uh, lacrosse players who's ever played the game. He said the Redwoods should shoot a two-pointer. Five seconds later, they shot a two-pointer. And I'm like, oh, that's Tony Romo-esque. And then I kind of was like, oh, no, he works for CBS. I'm calling this on ESPN. Is that going to be a big deal that I'm kind of like promoting <laughs> yeah. a competitor? Dude, you're but fired. Yeah. You're yeah. fired. That <laughs> so was, very- you know what? When I, I actually remember that moment because I stopped <laughs> watching your broadcast. I just tuned into CBS. I was like, yeah. I, something in my brain clicked. I was like, wait, I haven't checked on CBS in a while. So I turned off ESPN2 and started watching CBS because of the promotion you gave them. Yeah. So I was in the commercial. I'm like, oh, no. Like, was that mm. bad? But then the producer's like, don't worry about it. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <dude. laughs> no shit. <laughs> I noticed you didn't do the Collinsworth slide at the beginning of it. Probably for the same reason. You didn't want to give any shine to NBC. So they'll be, yeah. sure, to, they'll be sure to check that one off as, yes, he passed that test. But yeah. – Ultimately, he, he tanked our ratings. Yeah, so I apologize to ESPN for that. I should have said it was like Dan Orlovsky-esque or I can't yeah. say John Gruden anymore. I can say Troy Aikman now. So I, sh- I should have used a different comparison. But it was, hopefully it was Dan Orlovsky because he wasn't jacking off while he shot the shot. Yes. He was at yeah. the games actually with his with his kids. Big, big oh, good. Guy. Yeah. Less time to be alone so, with a woman in a room. Hopefully I don't. Uh, hopefully I still get invited back due to that error. So I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Um, yeah. okay. Let's get to Andrew Schultz. Great interview, long interview. Uh, we had him in studio last week. Uh, before we do that, a quick word from our friends from Roman testosterone affects a lot of aspects of men's fitness and health from sex drive to muscle and bone mass. The experts believe testosterone plays a huge role in our body's natural function, but men's testosterone starts to deplete with age, which is why it's important you support it early. Roman T support is meant to help men maintain their body's natural testosterone production with the proprietary supplement formulated by Roman's in-house doctors. Roman T support contains a blend of six nutrients, including ashwagandha to support healthy testosterone levels, magnesium to support muscular health, vitamin D3, a fat-soluble vitamin that plays a role in bone health and supports several cellular processes, zinc, an important trace mineral in the body that plays a role in muscle development. So Roman T support is not testosterone replacement therapy, and it is not meant to treat people with testosterone deficiency deficiency syndrome, but it is there to help guys as they get a little bit older and uh, help them with their testosterone. So go to GetRoman.com slash PMT to get $15 off your first order of Roman T support. That's GetRoman.com slash PMT. GetRoman.com slash PMT. Make sure you're taking care of your T. Make sure that you're living your healthiest life with GetRoman.com slash PMT, and you get $15 off your first order of Roman T support. Okay, here he is, comedian Andrew Schultz. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is uh, comedian Andrew Schultz. He has a new special out called yeah. Infamous. Yeah. Go buy it. Yeah. AndrewSchultz.com. TheAndrewSchultz.com. The, w- Some did fucking someone? A- yeah. Really? Early days, too. No way. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. such a scumbag move. Did you yeah. have a conversation with them? Nah, I didn't even try. Really? Because I think this was even before you could reach out to people. Like... This is before Instagram. This is like maybe Twitter days. So I was just like, fuck it, take the website. So you can have it? Is it probably another guy named Andrew Andrew Schultz or do you just get it just to take it from you? I'm hoping it's another Andrew Schultz. Well, no, wouldn't it be cool though if he was like, this Andrew Schultz guy, he's promising. He believed him. Yeah, right. Like that, (laughs) there's that one guy who I think like like very early internet days, like bought all of MLB teams. Oh, yeah, people he bought still like do the that. Yankees and everything. That's <laughs> smart. Like, no, that's smart. Yeah, people so, try to do that with like ETH and shit. Yeah, but so so that, someone for my uh, for my Venmo, and so they just get random Venmos sometimes, and, yeah. and Venmo won't give me my name from them. 
So they're getting money from you. Yeah, they're getting they're get well, they're taking money that is from your friends when you guys is, go out to dinner. Yeah, or that's like, like that. mint for me. Oh, that's brilliant. and there's nothing they can do about it. That is there's brilliant. no such thing as like a blue check on Venmo. Dude, That'd that's be, a great fucking hot oh, that's a great hustle. Yeah. yeah. He's just making tons of money. So all right, yeah. so infamous is out. Yo, Infamous is out. Buy it. My what are you looking somewhere. for? My wallet. No, I got it. Yeah, man, go buy it, man. That'd be great. I, yeah, I'm selling on my website. So, so I was telling you before we started that uh, I was listening to you on Tim Dillon. Mm -hmm. um, Tim Dillon should come on the show. He was being a pussy about COVID, and then he got COVID, which was very funny. He should be a pussy about COVID. He's, you know, he's <laughs> he's not built to beat it. <laughs> um, so, but you said. Uh, like I'll know if I if I if I made it or not, like instantly because of this. You know, yeah. I'm going direct to the people. I have a huge YouTube following. They're gonna go buy it. So it's been a couple days. Have yeah. you made it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It hit the numbers. Yeah, tell us we, the numbers. Give us the numbers. Um, give us the money. We, How much uh, money did you put in your pocket? We. <laughs> so after the yeah, that's that, that I, money's gross, but it's it's influential, right? Yes. That's the shitty thing about money is like you don't want to tell people how much money you made, but at the same time, like that's how they're gonna judge your success, right? So like, yeah, we made like so far over three million. Wow. wow. So that was cool because. I had to put up a lot to get it back, and I had to like sacrifice a lot to get it back. Yeah, so tell that story. So yeah. you were going to be on, was it Amazon? That's what people are saying. No, it wasn't Amazon. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so so let's I hate being a bitch about this no, shit. No, no, I just want to let you know because we're asking. I, I like the no, no. I I because I, I like the exec at the streaming company, and I don't want to be a fucking hypocrite because I'm doing projects with all these fucking streaming companies. I'm just I only care about comedy. Right. You got to force me to act. Right. I don't. I, I'm saying this right now. And every time I say it, I get offered another gig. I don't like acting. Right. I'm bad at it. But they keep offering. They shit. make Godfather Four. I'll do it because <laughs> I like the do move. It. Bro, yeah. they made White Men Can't Jump, and it was like literally the director almost didn't put me in it, and I was like, why? He was like, well, I listen to Brilliant Idiots, and you specifically said, don't <laughs> cast me, I'll ruin your movie. No, this but that's is, good. That's yeah, good you're marketing them. for yourself. Yeah. It's like, Maybe, I don't, oh, don't want to do your project. Now I want to write a movie and put yeah. you in it. They're the thing you can't, they can't have. I'll make you act. Yeah. You'll act for me. I hate acting, too. Yeah, no, yeah. Dude, acting's the worst. We should never be it's, in a movie. It sucks that we're Fuck so that. so fucking good at it, because <laughs> it sucks and I'll never do it again. Yeah, maybe that's the strategy. You, you are. You're there watching. That's a good ass point. You're not like used to it because it's Hollywood. Yeah. You're like a boxer that retires after every fight. You're like, okay, this is my last fight. I'm done. Bro, and I almost did that with this special. Really? I was like nervous. I was like, should I just say it's my last special? I'm like, because I don't know how the fuck this thing works, right? Like, there's no metric for success early on. So right. I'm like, do I call my friends that have done like the pay per view shit and like see how, when the orders come in? I have no clue. Right. And, um, yeah, thank God it, it fucking, it did good. So it did, it did I, so good. you're not snitching because I'm asking. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you were supposed to, let's just say a hypothetical streamer. streamer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you were going to do the special with them. Yeah. And they Contract said. Contract signed, everything ready to go. They've seen the special. They know the fucking jokes. They and, saw me live. And they were like, Andrew, you say the N word way too much in this special. Just enough. <laughs> so what I said was just <laughs> enough. And there's only one way you can find out. Where's my camera? If you go to theandrewschultz.com right now. <laughs> just enough. You, you, you'll, you'll know it when you feel it, what just enough is. But so they, they were like, they tried to give you notes and they tried to cut a joke, right? And there was a few jokes they wanted to cut. There was so a, what were yeah. the jokes? Yeah, tell there's them here. Bunny joke where I'm basically saying that the women deserved it. Okay, and yeah, like, I can uh, see how I'll, I can see how a streamer out. would be like this but is uncomfortable. I'm being fucking hyperbolic a right. little bit. Of course, but I watched the. Did you guys see the documentary about Ted? I did. Yes. Yeah. Okay, like the way he's killing these girls is he. The, the thing that, like stuck out to me is is like he asked them if they could help fix his car. Right. And it's like the fuck you know about fixing cars lady well but Do you know what i mean <laughs> counterpoint like this is what the 1970s that's no triple a like people just ask like i feel like that happened where you just be like hey can you help you me walked with up my to car? a lady with stockings yeah just be like, and can, said, you can you help fix my volkswagen but, beetle but yeah. you're thinking hold of on, it hold on wait no no hold but on. You're, no 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 your car is no, is fucked on no. the side of the road but you're thinking of it as a post ted bundy world this is a pre ted bundy world 
Like no, this is before Ted Bundy went around asking when everyone When sexism to fix- existed and women didn't work yet. Yeah, right. But, You're like, why are you out of the house? But also people didn't get Shouldn't murdered. Shouldn't you be making a pie and they, putting it on a windowsill? They, they didn't get murdered no, he's talking for about fixing a handsome guy's car. He's talking about strictly from a mechanical standpoint. Oh, I know standpoint. that. I know that. Yeah. But like they you know didn't what it is? say like, no, oh no, no, no. shit, I've heard about Ted Bundy. I'm you not going to You see help. the world half full. You're a feminist. <laughs> when you, when you see a woman. I, dude, I have a daughter. Come there on. There it is. Yeah. The future's female. F- fuck yeah. Right? So it's like you see a woman. You see a woman that could fix a car. Why not? Well, because I'm also, I can't fix a car. What? I can't. But I would it. stop. I would stop you and I'd be like, hey, buddy, can you help me fix and the I'd car? I'd be like, fuck no, dude. And I'd be like, all right. <laughs> right? But if I stopped a girl and I was like, do you think you might be able to fix a car? She's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm Marissa fucking Tomei. Well, you're not as good looking <laughs> as Ted Bundy. <laughs> right? That's true. Right. That's true. And he was good looking for the time. Right. Like, if you look at him now, I don't think objectively he's like that good. No, he's still hot. You think? Yeah, I went back and I was like, damn, homeboy could get it. He had that, like, prep, <laughs> yeah, he had that prep school look that, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, he did have a waspy thing. Yeah, so yeah. I I don't know it if It would be an honor, actually, to be murdered by Ted So Bobby. what you guys yeah. are saying is, do you agree? It was the girl's fault. Maybe the, girl, maybe <laughs> the girls knew exactly who he was, and maybe they were like, yeah, choke me, daddy. You That's know, like, it. Yeah. So anyway, so that was one of the jokes, and they were like, we don't like you taking this position where it's the girl's fault. Right. And I was like, that's reasonable, but it's funny. We're just joking around. Right, it's, ca- it's comedy. You're, you're not yeah, saying it. You're not like saying it as a matter of fact on CNN. I you're believe in none of this. Comedy. Right, right. All I of be- it is bullshit. Yeah, it's just for fun. Right, Like, right. I'm not doing fucking think pieces. Like, Chappelle can do the think pieces. Right. Okay? I'm going to make you laugh. Right. right. If Malcolm Gladwell went back and, like, wrote an expose, like, an essay on why the women deserved which to be he, killed he, he by could. Ted Bundy, which he, he, he might he do, might which do. would be an interesting <laughs> pivot for him, then that's one thing, but you're on stage telling a joke about Correct. it. Correct. Exactly. So and even him, half of his shit is bullshit anyway. Right. I asked him once. I was like, do you ever like go back on your opinions? He's like, oh yeah, it's, all, it's wrong all the time. He's like, I make stuff I'm up. Like, motherfucker, I put 10,000 hours into yeah. like being a masseuse. Yeah. Because well, you said. Malcolm Gladwell is the is the perfect case of a guy who's uh, just smart enough that dumb people like ourselves think he's a genius. And then real smart people are like, no, 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 no. This guy's full of shit. Yeah, yeah. And then when the real smart people try to explain why he's full of shit, I get lost. And I'm like, I'm just going to fucking read this book about yeah. how if I shoot free throws for 10 thousand hours i'll be in the nba exactly like that's all i want to do yeah you need someone that's like can communicate at your iq right but just a little bit smarter than you right yeah it's like that's the neil degrasse tyson thing yeah do you guys yeah like yeah, yeah we've had yeah. him on yeah oh really yeah he sucks huh he's, yeah i mean he's he's cocky he does suck he does suck he, about a lot of things but uh bah humbug I, but, about but, everything but he fills in he fills in a well, nice actually, niche in america which is like we need one nerd we can only really do one nerd at a time yeah and right now he's king nerd i think right. malcolm gladwell is like he's the second tier guy yeah, but like yeah, if you yeah. need a nerd if you need a smart guy it's just like ask neil tyson right yeah it. yeah my only issue with him is he's such like a downer about everything it's like right you're celebrating christmas and they're like, well, there's no way that he could deliver the present. Right, like, right. No, that shit sucks. But the, it's actually kind of, I, I would say, why Joe Rogan is very popular, too, is because he talks about a lot of subjects that, like, I don't know. I don't have enough time to learn about this subject. Yeah. But he talks about it in a way with people where it's just above, like, my threshold of knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Where I'm like, damn, he's making some good points. And Joe's genius is he just calls himself an idiot all right. the time. Mm-hmm. And he's not. Right. But he and he that's just. What we do I too. think the kettlebell well, we are thing. Idiots. Yeah. But what do you mean? We are idiots. Well, that, yeah. that's uh, Barcelona's done this very well. You're like, we're just the guys, but you're all like really fucking smart, and you have like yeah. n- like nuanced comedy. Yeah. They're like, it's just the guys. <laughs> I mean, it's a billion dollar business, but it's just the guys. <laughs> we're just hanging out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But right, so you. I won't pull back the veil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell them. Don't tell them that we all go home and read books every yeah. night. <laughs> no, this entire show, like everything that we do every day, we we spend about three hours before every podcast scripting the show. Show. Every word is written out, Brilliant. and then yeah, it's really like we, there's a lot of work that goes into sounding this stuff. There's some people that actually believe that too. Yeah, no, that, that they think do. that everything's yeah. like written and planned out. Like part of my take is rigged, is essentially yeah. what they're saying. Yeah, scripted. Wait, what do you mean? Like, like I think like we're like all right, now we're gonna do this joke. Now we're gonna do this. Now we're gonna do that. Mm-hmm. It's literally just us like being like, what should we talk about? And then we're like, all right, let's. That's talk the about best this. compliment, right? Because they can't conceive that people are gonna be that interesting or funny just off the cuff. Because they don't think they are. So they're like, no, these guys are faking it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I could see that. I, I do think there's um, I think there's a level of uh, intelligence. I think we're like, if you pulled back the veil of bar, so it's not that we're very smart. It's that we know that we're not very smart. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I think you guys undersell your intelligence. But there's I, a level of like knowing where you're stupid and having that like it's oh. it's like pretty much stupid people. 
people who are a little bit smarter but know they're not that smart and then really smart people. I have one more thing. Um, passion. Yes. You will be smarter than the average person at the thing you're passionate about. Correct. And like obsession, like passion and obsession. Like you can talk circles around fucking Mac Malcolm Gladwell when it comes to like, I don't know, the NFL combine or just any of these types of things. So now they're the idiot. Right. So you guys ideally get people that actually really love what they're talking about. And that's just that's just general podcasting. If you like, I I've always thought like anyone who's passionate about anything, y you just want to hear them talk about it. Yeah. Because like they're excited about it. You're going to get excited about it. Yeah. And we are very passionate about sports. Um, but we also know it's very dumb at the end of the day. Like that's what everything's dumb. Everything's dumb. There's no point to anything. Yeah. Correct. Neil Tyson Everything will tell you like the Earth will be swallowed by the sun in right. six billion years. Right. Yeah, it's like so shut who up gives cares. a shit? Who cares? Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, that really annoys me. That guy. So and what, also them geeking out about that stupid picture that they got from the telescope. Oh, I, oh, I, I hated I, it. I like that picture. What? Can you explain why? Yeah, because it made me feel so small. It like it like. It reminded me of how insignificant everything that we do truly is, which in a way is freeing. It's like liberating to know that, like you just said, like who gives a shit? It's the ultimate reminder of who cares because you look up at the sky and the, the piece of the sky that's the size of a grain of sand yeah. contains like 5,000 galaxies and that I you can't even see. It just reminds you, okay, well really at the end of the day, it doesn't matter that the Washington commanders have to deal with Carson Wentz as their quarterback. Oh, that's how you deal with your misery. My, yeah, exactly. This is like your 12 step. It yeah. really, it really, it, it lets you know that the stuff that you're upset about right now, even yeah. though it, it feels like it's the biggest thing in the world, and this could be anybody out there with whatever problem they have, yeah. ultimately it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the exact opposite I, way. I'm with life. you. Where I was like, I looked this at the, is the picture. Center of the universe. Yeah, I was. I looked at the yeah. picture and I was like, all right. Like if they showed me like the Rose Bowl on this, I'd be like, oh, that's cool. That's now fine. I understand it. Yeah. yeah like but when I was looking, I was like, what am I looking at? I want to believe mean? that our lives are important. Yeah. I want to believe that what we're doing has value because it's, then I can get up every way and grind. It doesn't. We all kind of fucking know this. Right. It's like why I like religion. You know what it's, I mean? It's like, be nice to people, don't rape. And it's like, why not? Uh, fucking God. You know? Yeah. He told us <laughs> It makes to, sense, yeah, right? right? Like, you just need a fucking... Re hey, the sun revolves around the earth. And then some asshole Copernicus was smoking out like 12-year-olds. He's like, no, nah, it's the other way. It's like, shut up. <laughs> Why'd shut you up, queer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, like, who gives a fuck? No, they right. killed him. They were like, good, no, no, kill him. Yeah. We wrote it down in all the books already. You should have told us before yeah. we wrote the books. All right, so here's my question for you. I, I do this thought experiment every now and then. Yeah. Just like I, I and it's probably wrong for me to do it, but I always think like, what if what if I just stopped? Right. What if I retired tomorrow? Okay. How long would it take for people to just forget about me? Maybe like a month. What would it be for you? Like, do you yeah, ever think about that? One. It's a scary one because it's like you think about uh, even even uh, Jesus and Mero just broke up. So we're taking this. Is this. Good. So so they break up this and I'm good. thinking about it and it's like everyone's upset and it sucks. But like in two months. Like people are like, oh yeah, that was fun. They move on, bro. Yeah, right. They, everyone moves on with their life, so it's like that's the way I kind of envision like how that's I how humble myself, humble, yeah. right? Where I'm like, if I just stop tomorrow, I think people would be sad for like a couple weeks, and then they'd be like, all right, what's this podcast? Because they also to have to move on, right? And it's not even that you weren't important to them; it's that they also need something to like give them joy and distract them during their day, right? So you can't even blame them for that shit, right? You know what I mean? It's like how long are you even gonna mourn like a family member that dies? Like eventually you got to keep going. Twenty-four with your hours, life, tops, right? tops, yeah, tops, tops. <laughs> Older or younger than me? That's the question. This guy's a sociopath. I like this. I fucking like this. Uh, no, I, yeah. So like you're gonna have to move on. I, I hear what you're saying. I'm wondering how how much. That's the tricky thing. Even now, because like I put out the special and like I don't like to tour nonstop. Right. Like I want to reflect on my new life and then I want to do comedy. I want to do in small little clubs and bounce around the city and like develop new jokes and like. I want the comedy to be something that I'm passionate about. That's going to take time. Right. Like people yeah. are asking me, oh, when, when you go on tour? I'm like, I'm not going on tour. Right. Not until I have something that I want to tour. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, so like, if you died the night of a show, right, and yeah. people had already bought their tickets, they spent like 40 bucks, would they be more upset that they're like, oh, man, I can't believe he died. That's so sad. He was such a good guy. Yeah. The world will be an empty place. Or will they be like, I wonder if I can get my 40 bucks back? That's... um. I think there are going to be some people upset about that 40 bucks. Yeah. yeah. There are going to be some people upset that like they had a plan that was ruined. There's, yep. that, there's that great Patrice O'Neill bit that um, about like, uh, you know, like he was on the subway and uh, you know, they, they stopped the subway and they're like, sorry, everybody, there's been a horrible accident. The subway hit somebody and it ran them over. And, you know, there's a few seconds on the subway like, oh, my God, it's just. 
Yeah. Hey, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Just look at the you look at the watch within 10 seconds. Right. It's like I got shit that I got to do. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's the that's how you stay humble. I don't know. That's what you need. You need a good balance of like confidence and insecurity. Like, or, or you could just be the, the, I actually respect the fully confident people that are 100% confident all the time. Do they make time. anything good? I mean, our boss, Dave, is definitely one of those people. Like, like he's, he's, he's always confident in himself. He's, he's always confident been. in himself. We had him on the pod. He's confident in himself, but he still has the chip. And the yes. chip drives him. Yes. It moves him. So the decisions that he makes, that's with 100% confidence. That's what you need. You need the confidence to make the decision so you're not like stuck in the mud. But you need the insecurity or you need. The, so it's like the Jordan shit. Like Jordan's like making up people right. that are criticizing him that don't even exist because he needs the extra motivation to go a thousand percent. Yeah. So I think that's what it is. It's like you need the insecurity to get better, but you need the confidence to actually do. Some people are so crippled, they won't even try to do the thing that they love. Yeah. But I just, I, Dave is a very, he's like one in a billion in the fact that like everything he does, he feels like 100% confident in and it always works. Yeah. Like when everyone's like, oh, how, how does this guy keep getting away with this? Because he tells the truth and he's, he just goes forward. Yeah. And I, I respect that because I'm, I don't have that brain. Why? What, what? I just don't. I have the brain of like, if I woke up tomorrow, like will like one day I'm gonna wake up and everyone's gonna be like, oh, this guy's not funny anymore. Really? Yeah. You think that? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I look at oh, it. Oh yeah. Like like a lot of NFL players, they they get into the league and maybe they have a good like three four seasons, and in the moment to them, it feels like I am the league. You know, like like I'm a big fucking shot. Yeah. It takes you know one down year, maybe a bad injury, and next thing you know, like there's a guy that they drafted that's taking his spot already. Yeah. Like the 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 world the world that we live in, making content, there's always going to be somebody that replaces you right. eventually. It's just the nature yeah, of the but beast. I that's think how it's I think happen. that's why you got to nourish those people too. Like Drake did it better than everybody, right? Like like Drake's co-signed every artist that's coming up. It's so smart, yeah. It's smart because you get to hop on the wave a little bit, but you also give them their first fucking single yeah. that goes crazy. So now they're indebted to you for life. That's true. That's big homie for life. So mm -hmm. who are you doing that with? Who are you grooming? Yeah. I mean, who am I grooming? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, Drake does that with underage girls, too. Yeah. Does he really? Wow. Allegedly. Allegedly. Did, 17. Wait, it depends on what state wait, you're in. Really? Yeah. Really? You shouldn't know the laws. What do, you, what do you mean? Like you shouldn't know yeah. the states that are 17. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Should, right? I agree. Like, yeah, you should anybody like, Mississippi. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in Arkansas. What are you talking about? That's it, an adult. Anybody that has that that Rolodex like ready to pull up in their yes. brain, big red flag. Yeah, that's, so wait, that's that's what they're saying that he was grooming. I don't believe that. I actually, this is actually something that I just learned from PFT. Yeah, no, it's, it, <laughs> he it, tells it's, me it's it. a, it's it a real thing. It's a real thing. I don't know all the details about, but he's he's had a a long track record of befriending young women on their way up and be like, really? I, I see a lot of talent in you. And who knows, it could be like completely benevolent. He could yes. be just being a great guy, but it just so happens to be 14 to 17 year old girls that he is repeatedly helped out on the pedophiles way up. Pedophiles ruin everything. Huh? They do. They, they fucking they, do. Name one good thing a yeah. pedophile has ever contributed to this world. <sighs> That's it. Actually, I mean, uh, Socrates. Yeah. Socrates. Yeah, like Michelangelo, like, I mean, you guys know who Stavros is? Yeah, yeah. he was on yeah. he was on the show. Okay, a month Stavros ago. is great. He friend. had a really yeah. funny bit. It's like, uh, you know, oh, I thought you were saying, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is Greek. Yeah. Oh fuck. <laughs> we no. just had him on. Do we have to delete no. that? No, he had a funny bit about like, uh, like you know, why can't we separate the art from the artist? Like when we were talking on the show, and he's like, uh, dude, like you know, we're not listening to R. Kelly. It's like we still use the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right. Like like all these old Greek dudes were just smoking out little kids. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and yeah, that's I mean, dude, that's that. You know, that's the funny thing. I was talking to Timmy about this, and I've been trying to like work this out. But like, like you live long enough, you become like the bigot. Like the most progressive person right now, and like the hippie in the '60s, right now is going like, I, why do dudes gotta swim with chicks? Yeah, right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Like, and like the progressive, right, the armpit hair mom is now like freaking out, right? right. And like, I wonder if that's the thing with the Catholic Church. Where it's just like they came around and like everybody in like early antiquity just had like a little boy that they would use as like a fleshlight, right? Like everybody. If you were successful, Michelangelo, fucking Galileo, Copernicus, all of them had little boys that they would fuck. Yeah. And then Catholicism comes around and like starts cleaning up shop. And they're like, listen, cut this fucking boy fucking out. Stop fucking animals. Right. There's like a brothel that's preserved in Pompeii that had the pictures of what you could buy. <laughs> they're fucking animals and shit. Like they're monsters, these right. people. Right. Catholicism comes in, cleans up. 
And fast forward 2,000 years, they're the boy fuckers. Right, mm -hmm. right. And I wonder if like a few like priests that know history are like, do you know how lucky y'all are? Yeah, like we 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 brought it down to like basically only a few thousand. A few boys. people. Yeah. It's a net We positive. move them around. Yeah, right, right. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's not even happening in just one area. We'll take it to another area. Right. But like this is the cost of like your kids' anal freedom. Right. Is that we <laughs> had to clean this up? Yeah. Yeah. I There's mean, that's something. a hard thing mm -hmm. to think about. Yeah. Like Fuck. It, it would be crazier, would it not? Yeah, it would be crazier if 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 religion didn't come. Well, I don't know. Fuck, now we're getting really deep. Like, I, I, I don't no know. Religion exists, at yeah. all. This is thought experiment. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is we need something to organize society. Yeah. We know we need that. Right? Correct. Because like, people have to have an explanation for the things that can't be answered. There it is. That's really what it is. And also people want answers and, and no one can answer. And a limit, too. That's, that, was, that was the big thing with like COVID when everyone was freaking out oh, and, yeah. and how it swung so hard is that the people that are supposed to be the experts are supposed no to tell us yeah. and they had no clue. Of course, we know why they had no clue. But that's where it all like fell apart, where it's like, dude, you're supposed to be the ones that tell us it's going to be OK mm -hmm. and you're not doing that mm -hmm. and everything falls apart because mm -hmm. you need an adult. Everyone needs an adult in the room 100%. who could just be like, yeah, no, this is actually what's going on. 100%. It's back to the intelligence thing where like I'm smart enough to know I'm not the smartest, but I need the smartest to tell we me like what to do. We like smart people telling us like right. why Elon is worth a trillion dollars. Right. It's just like, oh, yeah, he's our smart guy. You tell us what to do. This is so much easier if we organize our lives. Like yeah, this. the mm -hmm. world needs smart guys. I just I wish Elon would focus on one thing at a time, though. It seems like he spread himself out pretty thin. Bro, you know what's so crazy about Elon? Is it like, you know how he's getting a lot of hate? Like it went Trump, Rogan, and now it's Elon. Yeah, Dave's been mixed in there. Oh, and Dave. Times. Yeah, right? it no, was like Dave's, Trump, Rogan, <laughs> Dave, Rogan. I've always had the theory that Dave is just the he he is like the easier target of all those guys. Yeah. So it's like he's a step below Trump, Rogan, and Elon. Yeah, so everyone's yeah, like, yeah, we can yeah. get him. Yeah, because like but, you can't get Trump, you but can't it, get yeah. Elon. They they're learning that like if they go at Dave, they don't get the results. Right. So I think they just move on. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he punches back exactly and yeah. like hard. Yes, mm -hmm. way hard. <laughs> and, it, and it's really like great to see. <laughs> way like, way way hard. Exactly. Like it's gonna be tough for you to go to Jamba Juice the next day. <laughs> yeah. You're like when you have to say your name. You want to go to Soul Cycle? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> just get so. mean your looks like blonde bitches. Your glasses been canceled. <laughs> but but yeah, so it's like Elon came out and I think he. I think Elon thought that he was bigger than the system. Yeah. And I don't no know what the system is. Like, no. Who knows who they are, whatever. But, like, no one is. No one is. And that motherfucker's learning, bro. Yeah. Because, like, all of a sudden the Tesla started crashing. And that not that they weren't crashing. We just weren't hearing about it. Yeah. And then every week there's a new article. Listen. The, I, the dad dude, fucking the daughter. A lot of, a lot of the stuff. Up. Yeah. That, that's that, crazy. That's fucked up. How did the, we not know? So yeah, it, it right. was... It, yeah, it's not like it was a big secret, really. It's just somebody. What happens is somebody will just like find a quote from like an old interview online, right? Take a screenshot of it and be like, "How did nobody realize this earlier?" Right. And it turns out that he was having kids with not just his stepdaughter, which is bad, very bad, like Woody Allen stuff. Yeah. But he raised her from the time that she was four years four old. Years crazy. Old. And he's got two that's kids. So with fucked her. up, bro. It's like, and that's Elon's sister. It's yeah. Like, Slap your dad's dick out of your sister. Man. Yeah. Like, sister slash. Wouldn't it be mother? Aunt? No, now no, stepmom. Stepmom, no, no. yeah. Stepmom. Oh, now? Yeah. It's a sister slash stepmom. If they're, if they're yeah. married. Yeah. That's I think they're up. broken up, but yeah. That's oh, fucked God. up. Why'd they break but up? It, it, That's sad. I mean, if, you, if you're, if you're, if you're going to go to those, love is dead. If you're going to go to those links and at least make it work for life, you know? Didn't but, I raise you to commit to things? <laughs> no, but you're, you're right. Like the, the um, Dave piece, like his, Everything that's happened in the last couple of years, I'm convinced a lot of it has to do with he started making a mockery of Wall Street and the Davy Day Trader stuff when he's like, it's all fucking fake. Like stocks only go up. I think that had a lot to do because he pissed off a lot of people who've been playing this game for a really long time and they don't want someone to come and shine a light and be like, hey, this is all just kind of a joke. If you disrupt a powerful institution, they will come for you. Yeah, because their life depends on it. It's like you're fucking with their money. You're fucking with their family. Yeah, you're you're exposing like what yeah. they've been kind of rolling with for a very long time. Nobody said anything about Elon until he was like, "I'm no longer a Democrat." Yeah, and then literally a few weeks later, was like, "Remember when your dad fucks kids?" <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, this like they knew that the whole time. Right. But he went a you little too far. It. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. I just wish he'd focus though, because he's he's. He At the same time, he's like trying to, he's claiming he's trying to defend free speech. Yeah. He's also trying to save the human race by taking us to Mars. 
He's inventing whack. autopilot cars. The subway. The, he he invented the subway when yeah. he drilled that tunnel to his girlfriend's house. <laughs> he did. He's, he's like, yeah, we're all going to get in a tunnel and go from point A to point B. It's like, um, yeah. the subway? Are there going to be Snapple Why? bottles rolling around? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we maybe fix the fact that every time it rains in New York City, the subway gets flooded? Let's start there. <laughs> yeah. He's like, we're going to do a subway, but you're all going to still drive your own cars. Yeah. 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 How does that sound? And they're going to be my cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he's uh, he's just all over the place. I want I think he's taken a copious amount of Adderall. I think the dude is just like drifting from one topic to he just needs to focus in on one thing yeah and just really lock in yeah, on that dominate like, it either space do you want to go to space you want to go underground yeah. or do you want to defend, defend free speech just pick maybe two out of those he's three. also oh. like we we have a theory and it's not like a novel theory but like any guy who or any person because i'm a feminist uh any woman guy who has that much money and doesn't buy a sports team can't be trusted. Piece of shit. Because it's like, what is the point of having that much money and not owning a sports franchise? Like, that's that's the end goal of society. It's would like, you do it? Y- yes. Yeah. That's, I would stop doing everything yeah. else, and that would now be my career. Yes. The okay. end goal is, like, buy an NFL team. That's what rich people do. Ten- they don't fucking try to cure, like, the world of all its problems and go to Mars. Yeah. They fucking buy the Panthers and then get pissed when they go 7-9. and nine. So $10 billion. Yeah. Who are you buying? I it, mean, I would buy the Bears, but I'd buy any team that was up. Uh, yeah, whatever. Like, I'd buy any at team. That point. Yeah. But you're not starting with football. I would start. I, football is the is the top. Okay. You know, there are franchises that you guys could probably buy now. Well, I actually invested in a, in a uh, Futsal? Uh, uh, soccer team in uh, Wales that was in the EPL and then got relegated. I've lost all the money I invested oh, in. No. It wasn't a lot, but so it was still stupid. So we, we I've owned, tried it. <laughs> we own the world's worst lacrosse team. Yeah, that too. And we yeah. we have a part ownership stake in an NBL team, which is a New Zealand professional basketball oh, yeah, team, the yeah, Breakers. Yeah. But this is just pieces. Like, I want to be the owner. You be and the that's guy. what a rich guy should want to do. They yeah, should yeah, want to yeah, be like, yeah. I have all this money. I can't spend all this money. Yeah. Let me go just fucking win a Super Bowl. Yeah, that's you believe you could do it. And that's better than Mars. Yeah. Oh, like being the guy who gets handed the Lombardi trophy is so much better than Mars. It is. You can't mm-hmm. fucking convince me otherwise. It is. What's on Mars? We right. have the pictures. Right. It's fucking crazy to me. So that's why Elon, like, dude, just buy. If Elon bought, like, a NBA team tomorrow, I'd be like, all right, now he's on the track. Knicks. Yeah, he's on That'd track. That would be so cool. Well, yeah, yeah, so you're, 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 you're a diehard Knicks fan, right? I can't say diehard anymore. But why? I've been, like, a season ticket holder forever. I'm just annoyed. And it's, like, so obvious the problem. Like, my buddy was uh, was showing me the uh, the board of the Knicks. There's like five Dolans on the board. Yeah. You can't tell me that the five best people to increase shareholder profits happen to have your last name. Right. Like right. that's not possible. Right. Right? Right. Like there's something wrong there. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? And I was talking to Timmy about this as well. Just like this is this is why you can't trust nepotism. Like I admire people who have like family businesses and stuff like that and they continue to be good. But like you're not going to get the IQ. You're going to have a dumb fucking kid or yeah. a dumb fucking daughter, whatever it is, and they're not going to be able to run the team, and he just won't relinquish the fucking team. It's, so. it's the old uh, saying, like, the first generation builds it, the second generation maintains it, the third generation Ruins destroys it. it. 100%. Like, that's really what... Yeah. And it actually always makes sense when you look at it and you're like, why is things going bad? It's like, oh, because it's the fucking grandkid yeah. who has been rich his entire life, and, like, what do they care? Yeah. That's uh, the George W. Bush. Yeah, like that. The Bush family yep. in action, right there. First yep. guy, he made the billions. Second guy led the CIA, yep. became president. Third guy destroyed the country. Yeah. That's kind of how it goes. That's why the Kennedys yeah, yeah, are genius yeah, yeah. because the third generation just dies in tragic ways. Yes, before they can fuck before it up. Before they can fuck it up, it's Shakespearean. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's brilliant, and they are broke now. Yeah, the Kennedys, and they keep the allure because, like, what yeah. if? What if these tragic things hadn't happened? That Joseph Kennedy, though. Oh, bad guy. That motherfucker. <laughs> bad guy. He's a badass. Bad dude, guy. But designed the whole thing. He's yeah, the architect. He yeah. Like he was like literally, my son is going to be president. Yeah. I'm going to sell drugs or fucking bootleg or whatever the hell he did. Yeah. He, it, he was a. He was a bootleg. He was runner. a bootlegger, he was right? A Nazi yep. sympathizer. Was he really? Oh yeah. Oh the yeah. Bushes too. Do you watch? Yeah, the, do you here. watch Peaky Blinders? I watched the first two or three. All right, seasons. So the last season, there's a character that's yeah. pretty much just Joseph Kennedy. I watched until the Hasidic Jew was a badass, and I was like, I think I'm out. <laughs> you don't like fucking uh, <laughs> what's his name? Tom. Uh, no, he's an amazing Hardy. actor. Tom Hardy. Yeah, he's he's amazing. Awesome. I just didn't buy the whole thing. <laughs> Why? Like, ah, like you're gonna fight people. I, they're always out of breath. Like uh, you know, I, <laughs> like come on. Like that you're gonna get. They're, they're your henchmen. That's not, like, believe, not believable yeah, for you. Anymore. Wear like forty pounds of cloth. Like it's just not. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. I'm sorry. Yeah. But that's yeah. He uh he did. He set up the whole thing, and he also like I I've read a little bit about him, and it's like 
Joseph Kennedy, like he basically had the brains to be president himself. He didn't have the he demeanor. He didn't have the story, and, and he didn't or have the, the demeanor. demeanor. Yeah, like yeah, he, yeah. people, like FDR was like, this guy's an asshole. Yeah, like he's he's too much. Like he's too abrasive. Yeah, and like that's and so he basically was like, my sons will be a little less abrasive, a little less of an asshole, and yep. we'll put it all together. And it wasn't supposed to be JFK. He was supposed Remember to be his brother, be his, his older brother, brother who died in World War II. Now. And I think they crafted a story for JFK's, like what, what happened with JFK when he went to war wasn't exactly what happened. You yeah. know what I mean? They, yeah, they, they yeah. kind of like manipulated the story to make him look a little bit more heroic right. because he understood. It's like, that's what I'm impressed by. Obviously, you can't talk to a guy like that, but like, I'm like, how did you understand society and human reaction at a time where there's no fucking internet, nothing? This is just gut instinct. You know how to manipulate people. Yeah. And... I mean, you want to talk about like self belief, yeah, and confidence, yeah, like, to be to like come, my son's gonna be president, but also like kind of come from the mud, like you're a gangster, yeah, you're yeah. a gangster, and you're not even you're not mobbed up, right? Like you are mob, but you're not like Italian mob, right. right, right, right? Like, but you're working with those guys. You got those guys working with that. To me, is incredibly impressive. Yeah, and it seems like almost the American way. It's like you come here, you do some kind of shady illegal shit. You get your bread and then you go legit. Yeah, you clean it up for your for your kids. That's it. And if you don't clean it up by the next generation and you get clipped, that's on you. Yeah. 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 I kind of feel like it was easier to to do something like that back in the day though, because if you want your son to be president and you're a rich dude and you're well known, there's like three guys at that point that ran all the media in the United States, yeah, right? It's like yeah, yeah, three yeah. newspaper barons, maybe one guy that yeah. makes newsreels. And he worked in Hollywood too. Yeah, he worked yeah. in Hollywood. Oh, so so, he knew. so you can just you can make the country believe whatever narrative it is that you want. There's nobody, mm. there was no Twitter back then for people to be like, actually his war record wasn't that impressive. I yeah. pulled up these files, you know, like mm. it was much more difficult to, uh, to, to break whatever narrative already existed out there. So, yeah. so under this entire hypothetical, that would mean that like my kids and KFC's kids, they're the ones that like will take bar stool to mainstream, like to like, we'll be on TV and shit. Fuck TV. <laughs> We, we were on TV for one day. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> the HBO thing. No, no. We, it was, uh, well, no, we did. Oh, no, you had the ESPN show. We had show ESPN, yeah, yeah, for one but day. But this is. TV. But that was going that was going public. Like, that was that was trying to clean up our, like, the olive oil business being like, hey, look, we're selling olive oil now. And they're like, no, you aren't. <laughs> you said all this shit. <laughs> if you want to know who the mobsters are, just look at who's selling olive oil. Yeah, right. It's, exactly. Just just diversify a little bit. Go there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trash and olive oil. So wait, all right, what are, well, there's a long way to go to what what were the other jokes that got cut? <laughs> <laughs> um, I it, love this interview though because I, I like whenever we have interviews, like yeah. I'll I'll have notes and shit. I haven't yeah. looked at my computer. Uh, I think this the is the way. most fun. Yeah. Like, that's just fucking that's talk what people like. Happens. Yeah. And it's almost like uh, I just like chopping it up. Yeah. yeah. Obviously I want to promote the special and I I you know, there's part of me that like wants to do that, but at the same time, like I just like fucking talking shit. So yeah. If people go see it, that that's that's awesome. But like, the jokes that you got oh, cut yeah. are in the so, in the special, exactly, right? Yeah. So the Ted well they didn't get cut. We didn't cut it. It was a Ted Bundy joke. It was another there was another Michael Jackson joke in there that they didn't love that much. And uh a lot of victim blaming here. There, there's, uh, there's, uh, I'm sensing a trend. Yeah. And then there was like parts of this abortion bit that I put out that they were like, it was kind of like, there was silly. The line, um, it was like a Harry Potter reference that I had for whatever reason they didn't like. Uh, really? Yeah. The, the line was fetus deletus. <laughs> like it was a spell and uh and they were not feeling it. They weren't feeling it. So yeah. wait, well, how's that conversation go when they're like, here are your notes? Did you have... Was there any moment where you're like, I want to work this through? I want to like work yeah, with you guys? Yeah, like, I'm like, guys, like, well, let me know what's going on. Like, one, I'm bummed that you didn't tell me this before. Right? So this was right before we were supposed to go? No, 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 no. We were going to, I want to finish the tour first. So we were going to like, you know, push it back. And then kind of what I think what really happened is like culture changed a little bit. Like, um, you know, the Chappelle trans thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think freaked out. A lot networks. of them. Yeah. And they were like, oh, shit. This is. This crazy backlash. It looks crazy. There's no backlash, but there's crazy backlash just for jokes. I don't know if we can do this. And also, I'm like, I'm a white guy, and I'm like making fun of every single like race right. and religion and gender in the crowd. Right now, if you're at the show, you watch the show. It doesn't feel bad because those people are there laughing at it. Right. If I'm doing the blackface joke to a black dude, it's not bad. Right. If everybody's in the audience is white and I'm talking about these things, then maybe it gets a little sensitive. But like at my shows, it's, it's the most diverse fucking audience. So it's like I'm busting balls with everybody. It's fine. But I understand an executive board that's just like, wait a minute, white guy. Yeah. Making right. fun of Somalians. Right. 
this is weird. Alert. Do we want to attach ourselves to this? Mm -hmm. have, have you noticed, though, um, I feel like just anecdotally, like it's now starting to swing back towards comedy where yeah. people are now because there was that moment where it felt like there was, uh, we can't make these jokes, people can't do these things. Now it feels like comedians have kind of taken it back a little bit, being like, Absolutely. it's comedy. It's supposed to be ridiculous and stupid and not real life, and people are supposed to laugh, and we're supposed to make you think about fucked up things. Yeah. So do you think that that's actually like occurred 100%. where people, and why is that? Is that just because you guys now own it? Like YouTube. You, yeah, you being able to say, here's my special, and, and that's what it is. It's like what you guys did with sports. Yeah. Like every single, I mean, there's going to be disruption in every industry, but it's like once you feel the real, it's hard to go back. Like, and I'm not trying to like uh, blow smoke up your guys' ass, but like once you watch, once you watch shows here talk about sports, it's hard to watch the guy in the suit yeah. make like Gucci main puns. Right. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it's just harder. Like once you feel the real, it's hard to go back to the phony. So I think that happened with media. I think that happened, with like, obviously with Rogan and podcasting. Yep. And I think it's happening with comedy where it's like you saw the comedy that's on Netflix and you saw the comedy that was on Comedy Central. God awful, right? They're in the tubes. Yep. You know? and, uh, and then you saw what was being put out on YouTube and you're like, oh, shit. Like, I'm actually laughing. Right. There was a point where people would say this. I don't like stand-up comedy. That was a sentence human beings would say. Yeah. Right. No, you, you just don't like bad stand-up comedy. Right, right. But right. that's all that was out there right. because everybody was so terrified. So then they go and see comedy and they start laughing. They think that like it's this new novel thing. It's like, no, there's an outlet for the good comedy. Right. Which is fucked up. Right, yeah. And that's how it's always been. You look at Carlin, Pryor, Bruce, Eddie. Every comic that was like hilarious had immense pushback. Right. Cancel him, shut him down, don't let him talk. To be honest, this is the best time to do comedy. Yeah. Like, you want to do comedy at a period where people are like, don't do that comedy. Right. When anybody can just say anything, you get, like, abstract with the comedy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Ga yeah. Galifianakis, who's hilarious, but he thrives in a moment where you can just say anything. Right. Because there's nothing to push back against. There's no, like, fucking tension. There's no nothing, like, naughty and mischievous. That's interesting. And there's I never no, thought there's of no that bottleneck right. now. Yeah. There's no, you don't have to go the network route, like you were saying with Comedy Correct. Central. Like, there's not one guy in a suit being like, I don't like this, therefore you're not getting the exposure. You can put it all out on your channel. Exactly. And then there's some guys that have been doing it long enough, like, like Chappelle, where they just they They're can worth the risk. They can do whatever they want because exactly. they know like, okay, we'll pay him thirty million dollars and he'll deliver a stand up special that will get views. And I was I was watching his most recent one, um, actually just like a week ago. And I, it was the talk at the school? Oh no, not that one. I haven't seen that one yet. That, that one put me off because I was about to start watching it and then said it was a speech. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Yeah, that don't that, that yeah. she's yeah. he's yeah. delivering a speech. <laughs> I'm sure it was funny, but I watched I watched uh the one that was before that and I realized with Chappelle there's so many jokes that people get mad about that he makes. Yeah, yeah. But when I'm watching him, I realize that in some of his more offensive jokes, he's just he's putting the joke first before the message. He's tying his entire routine in just to get to this one very funny punchline. Yeah. That the funny punchline should not be looked at as him preaching at anybody, trying to convince you about something. Right. He's just finding the best, most interesting way to get to the funniest joke possible. Yeah. And yeah. that's fine. The, and, and that's fine. That's the goal, right? We're stand up comics. Like, we should make people laugh. I think there's this idea that, like, comedy has to be, like, true and is probably. John Stewart was so fucking prolific at what he did. I think, like, a generation of, of kids grew up going, oh, comedy is also truth. Right. And it's not. He's genius at doing that, but comedy is just what makes you laugh. Right. Like, that's really what it is at the end of the day. And. We will say it's also like based on what you feel and what you feel is often wrong. Like we're not stupid. We know the right thing to say to a group of people. If I'm looking at like one of the sur survivors from Ted Bundy, I'm not going to be like, well, why'd you try to fix the car? Right. Right. Like, but it's funniest thing is to say that. Right. The funniest thing to say to a survivor is like, so like, did you ever think you yeah. might not be able to fix it? Do you know a lug nut? <laughs> like what's going on here? <laughs> you walked up and like, do you know a lug nut? Yeah. Like, right. Like, have you ever changed a tire? Yeah. Like, what's going on? That's the fucked up thing, but it's the funniest. Yeah. And people think it, they just, you know, you know, social norms, you don't say it because it would be fucked up to say to someone. But Take yeah. my wife, please. Yeah. yeah. It's like watching Jackass. You know that you shouldn't go up to your friend, and kick him in the nuts, but it's the but funniest. I fucking love watching other people do it. Yes. It's great. Yeah. hundred percent. And it is where, where everyone gets tripped up is because then they take, like comedy 
taken to you know people transcribing it i always think like whenever someone it hasn't really happened to us but like if you transcribe a podcast yeah you could read it and be like well that's fucked up it's like but dude the intent like how we're saying it yes. the, the humor in the room matters that's the most important thing i was i was doing like a uh, a, a conversation, one of these things at, at the cellar. Noam, who owns the Comedy Cellar, the Comedy Cellar is amazing. I'm sure you guys are familiar. If anybody's listening, watching, go. It's an amazing club. And he does these like uh, conversations. We'll have these like intellectuals, and sometimes brings comics on. And they always try to like mash like comics and intellectuals. I think like intellectuals kind of like like what we're doing, and it's like naughty, and they wish they could kind of say what well, we say. Well, because they're not funny. And yeah. Also, they're not funny. Right? Yeah, right. And. Um, but they always try to like add this importance to comedy. They're like, you know, this is the last uh, bastion of hope in a free society. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, we should never talk. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. Like, right. the second we're on stage, I have to be right. Yeah. I don't want to be right. Right. I want to be, be a clown. I want to make everyone laugh. Yes, yeah. literally that. There's what is nothing the, wrong with that. And, and it's the most beautiful thing. Because at the end of the day, when we're at the bar busting balls, nobody's like, you know how right Tim was today? <laughs> yeah, right. I love hanging out with that guy. Yeah, that bit was so correct. Was correct. <laughs> and there's nothing less funny than a comedian who's like, I am the last bastion of truth. Yeah, right. fuck in, that. In, in an untruthful society. Oh, God. <laughs> Just be the last bastion of laughs. Like, I remember being up there with him. And I was like, guys, like. The, the funniest joke about COVID or whatever like that is is not true. It's not right, but it's funny. And and they're like, like what? And I was like, uh, I fuck, I'm gonna fuck this up. But I had something. It was like, um, it was like like the, it, like the Me Too movement like stopped with COVID. And they were like, why? And I was like, well, you know, women like to be at home cooking and cleaning, and all we had to do is give them a banana bread recipe, and they shut the fuck up about their problems, <laughs> right? And and immediately. There's like a reaction and people are like, okay, this is not true. Right. It just happens to work out. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're just doing, and you're getting the reaction out of people. That's it. That's the mm -hmm. best comedy is when you're like, when someone, a comedian says something and you're like, whoa, that's fucked up. But holy shit, I laugh. That's funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, that's all it is. You're making these kind of connections that are fucking funny. We're going to get back to Andrew Schultz in a second. But before we do, he's brought to you by our great friends over at BetterHelp. It's a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. How well would you take care of your car if you had to keep the same one for your entire life? That's how our brains work. So why don't we treat them that way? How we care for our minds affects how we experience life. So it's important to invest time and care into keeping them healthy. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, chat, and even live chat only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. And best of all, our listeners get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash PMT. That's betterhelp.com slash PMT. Invest in yourself. Invest in your mind. Check BetterHelp out. Betterhelp.com slash PMT for 10% off your first month. And now here's more Andrew Schultz. All right. So you're special. So you got yeah. had you, you were like, all right, fuck it. We're not doing it on this streaming service. We won't say the name. Right, right. right, um, right, right. And then you go straight to YouTube. Was there a moment where you were well, nervous? I didn't do YouTube. I, I, oh yeah, you yeah on your on theandrewschultz.com. Go buy it right now. Yeah, and Moment House is this company that is uh, basically streaming the thing for you. Okay, and then like we're gonna have it for sale for like two weeks, so I think it stops like the first of August or okay. July thirty or something. All right, like so that. go buy it right now. Um, yeah, please, because this is gonna be the last week. We're gonna run this on Monday, and then so, you have it forever, and you have it forever. That's yours. You yeah. should you should just be like. Uh, expiration date like six months and right just take it back i should right and just be like you want to laugh at that <laughs> pay me again. Back again. Yeah, yeah. again yeah pay me again so yeah. but it was there a moment where you're like all right this like i hope this works yeah i was terrified the entire time really absolutely because you had to put up a lot of your own money yes yeah a lot of money and that's i mean that's got to be a fucking like when you're writing that check like hope oh, i get this back yeah it's fucking because i have no clue right like i know i have i have podcasts that are, are very supported and i have community that made me feel comfortable you know what I mean? I had like, I had like, I had, a, we had a Patreon. We have a Patreon for Flagrant. Is, and um, and I knew that there are people that really support us and there was a sizable amount of people. So I was like, okay, these are the people that are willing to commit money to to me and my boys. And I was like, okay, that gave me some confidence. And then I looked at like, obviously the live shows and we had done all these shows. And I was like, okay, there are people who are willing to like get a babysitter, put on a fucking outfit, come out, see a show. I'm like, okay, this is good. Um, but at the same time, I have no expectation. And yeah. we dropped the first day and we asked the fucking, we asked the company, like, what is the percentages? Like how many, how many people buy the first day, the last day? Like, what is the thing? 
And they were like, uh, oh, it's usually like 30% the first day and then like 20% through and like 50% day of. And we dropped the first day and it was okay. Right. But I was like, fuck, is this gonna be 30%? Dude. So I'm like sweating and uh, we started to kind of build and we dropped some more clips and then articles came out and people really kind of got behind the story. And that last day, it was fucking nuts. And, and the day after, it was just fucking nuts. And Did I it, bet when you do it again, you'll probably have the same feeling. Because it doesn't go, like, so that's not exactly the same, but we we have Rough and Rowdy here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the, the Love fighting league. So it's pay-per-view. Yeah. And I see the numbers, and every single time fight goes exactly the same, where the numbers are slow, slow, slow. Day and then, of. And then, like, 30 minutes before, it's yeah. everyone. Because, like, of course, like, yeah. you think about when you were fucking used to buy Tyson fights. You didn't buy it two days before. Right. You bought it. Like Five literally, minutes yeah, before. right. And but no matter what, we'll do it, and I'll just be nervous the whole day, being like, well, yeah. "Is this the day that no one buys it?" And then yeah. boom, like clockwork, right before it starts, like, yeah. "Hey, we just got all of our buys." Hundred percent. It just scares the fuck out of you. And the rough and rowdy thing is great because it like proves the value of story in a fight. Yeah, you know, like all the uh, YouTubers are doing it now, and they're having a lot of success with these fights, but the most success happens when there's an interesting storyline. Yes. And you guys baked in storyline to people that you don't even know. Right. Two brothers. Well, I want to see which brother is going to win. Gay guy, straight guy, yeah. the hillbilly, the black dude. Like, build in the, the beef already. That's why UFC, I think, like, took off was Ultimate Fighter. They got it. I watched Ultimate they Fighter, and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. Like now I know these guys. These guys are fighting yeah. every day and they're living in a house together. Yeah. That part just takes it to a totally different totally level. Totally different level. Yeah, yeah. You're baked in and and also like that the company has all the fighters signed. So it behooves the company to make interesting fights. Yeah. And, and the fighters a loss doesn't matter as much as in boxing, where if like you're an up and coming fighter and you lose in like your eighth fight. That could derail your entire It's career. over, yeah. It could be over. You could lose your first fight in the UFC and then go be UFC champion. Yeah. Like, they, they are invested in you. They believe in you. You could lose five fights. There are yeah. guys who lost three fights in a row. They're still fighting. There are guys who have 17 losses on the roster still fighting. Yeah. So It's true. I never even thought about it that way, but you're right. Like, it, that's part of why boxing is probably dying stinks. is, like, one, one loss... Like we we went and called the Canelo fight against Bivol and he lost that and it's like yeah yeah Canelo is still gonna do well and in his next fight against Triple G is gonna be great yeah but you have to be honest it like a little bit like you're like oh that that lost a little bit a hundred percent yeah you're always yeah. searching for perfection yeah. You, yeah you always think like the guy that's undefeated he's the best in the world you got to beat him but yeah. then if you have two losses early in your career you might not get the chance to even step in the ring with that guy yeah and who knows because you're always looking for the guy that has that zero next to his name like zero 100%. losses and then that's the guy that you got to beat i've been trying to get an alex jones fight going on rough and rowdy i actually heard oh, from one of his reps a couple years ago that he wanted to step into the ring I don't know who a fair fight would be against Alex Jones because he's he's such a unique body type. Yeah. And I know I know you've interviewed yeah. him. You know Alex pretty well. I feel like he would he would definitely sell pay-per-views. People would want to see that fight, but then it's like do we do we want to be in the Alex Jones business yes, at the end of the do. day? Um 100%. Uh who does he fight? That's a great. That's a, So I I who do you have what's the funniest? So question? I reached out to Hassan you know Hassan Piker? Of course. Yeah, so, love Hass Hassan. Yeah, so uh, through through a friend of a friend, Hassan was like, yeah, I'll fight Alex Jones. But do they beef? I think, I I don't know if they beef outwardly. I think it's kind of yeah. like game respect game. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex Jones is a fucking character, and yeah. so people want to hear him, you know, go on his rants about whatever yeah. he's thinking about that day. I don't know if they have, like, direct beef, but I'm pretty sure that that fight would break all kinds of records. Yeah, I mean, it would absolutely... I'm trying to think. You need to find the perfect foil for Alex, though. Like Alex has to fight like Bill Clinton. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. he has to fight like Ghislaine Maxwell. Hillary Clinton. Hillary yeah. Clinton <laughs> versus Alex Jones uh -huh. in a hot dog eating contest and or then, something like that. And then Alex Jones dies like ten hours before the fight, mysteriously. <laughs> I mean, come on. And how, you have to put a clause in. Yeah. You have to put a clause in for everybody pre-orders. Like we're keeping your money. Yeah, right. Matter. Like uh -huh. if he dies, it's not our fault. Dude, Hillary Clinton versus Alex Jones. <laughs> 
is the greatest pay per view that's ever existed yeah. in history. Just get, he gets like a bat. Get him she in the like ring, a knife or something, or just get him in the ring and let him talk for like thirty minutes first. Have a debate. Just have him sweat. And see if Hillary can convince him to suicide himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, th I mean, there's no way you get Hillary in there, but I think you got to try to make that happen. Yeah, I think you got to pitch it as. Wait, if it's why not Hillary? Happened. He would die. I, the, the problem with Alex is like. The fuck, dude! I've seen I've seen his first step. I've seen him like sprinting after people on the street. Oh yeah, he's got he's, a nice first step. He's explosive out of the gate. Like yeah. he would crush DK Metcalf yeah. in a three cone oh, no, shot. He's a D yeah. lineman. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. but I feel like anything longer than thirty seconds, Alex Jones is probably going to have a heart attack. Yeah. Yeah. I I had dinner with him once. He ate a whole onion raw. <laughs> What? <laughs> on a plate. <laughs> he just ordered that an rocks. onion. We were, we were getting steak, and then he was like, all right, I'll, uh, I'll just have an onion. And they're like, uh, on the steak, he goes, nope, put it on a plate. And uh, he just gets the onion, he cuts it in half, and he's using a knife and fork and just having full-on conversation. Jesus Christ. Yeah, the thing with Epstein is, <laughs> <laughs> oh, full onion. Man. That's such an alpha move. Because like everybody yeah. else at the table is like, I could never do that. Yeah, yeah. we're like fuck? picking out our onions with like two fingers. <laughs> yeah, like, Ew. this is gross. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, no, he's man. a wild dude, man. That guy's a... Uh, that guy is fucking entertaining, dude. I'm I'm a little disappointed in his career trajectory though, because I used to listen to Alex every day. So oh, I, really? I lived in Austin for about ten years, oh. and I would listen to him on the way to work, on the way home from work, and he would be going on about like uh, Barack Obama smells like sulfur, Hillary Clinton is actually a reptile, yeah, like real hardcore shit, yeah. And now he's talking about like tax laws and stuff. Yeah. He's like he's water. He's brought himself closer to reality. As you it's want going him on. to go even more. I extreme. want him to go. So I've never seen Star Wars, but from what I understand, the big knock on the first prequel was, oh, now they're talking about like shipping restrictions as the big conflict, as opposed to having Darth Vader want to blow up the world, you know. And that's why everyone hated that one. Eee. I want Alex Jones to get back to the fact that like underneath the the core of the Earth. There's there's fucking aliens that are beaming microwaves up at you trying to like shrink. Because that your also testicles. doesn't hurt anyone. That doesn't hurt like anyone. The, you know, Wait, uh, Sandy Hook Sandy shit. Hooks hurt people. Uh, then it, yeah, then yeah. it's like they, it's no longer a victimless crime at that point. But like back in the day, he was like doing yeah the reptilian shit, and uh, oh, and that's dude. when Alex Jones was was at his finest, the pure uncut stuff. I got a I got a I got to agree with you right there that it's actually safer the more extreme that he goes mm -hmm. because it's hyperbolic, yes. it's silly, it's comedy. And no one's like, point. oh, wait, I'm an alien. Why yeah. Why are they, why is he coming after me? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The frogs are gay or right. whatever he right. said. Like, we love that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it has to be like locked to a little bit of truth. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? That you have to be able to convince us slightly. Yeah, it's like, uh, what is one derivative from the world is flat? Uh, the earth is hollow. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I can't look. Yeah, yeah, no one knows. knows. Yeah, and isn't it at the? Isn't it in the middle? Isn't it like it's a like molten lava? Core? Yeah, yeah, liquid. Right. So it's not be, solid. You gotta be hollow to yeah. have the liquid. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so a that's gusher. Kind of true. Yeah. 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 I just I, I want him to get back to the crazy shit. Somebody needs to tell Alex like go go off the leash. What Alex. if Alex Jones fights the entire Uvalde Police Department? <laughs> yeah, I mean they wouldn't show up. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Al Alex in one. <laughs> yeah. But if he did that, does he win over America again? Mm. I think so. I think people I would root for Alex Jones yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. Do, do they would forgive him for what he said about the other school shooting? Right. If is that the only way that he can come back? Probably. If he takes out all these cops. Yeah. Wow. Legacy defining fight. There it is. <laughs> Line them up. <laughs> Ultimate one redemption after another. story. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I don't I even know how to Alex. say. I don't even know. How, so do you talk to him like? Yeah, he'll message Routine me. Link. Like he'll leave like voice notes. They're really funny. Yeah. Hey, love what you did. That's great. Okay, I gotta get back to this onion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start ordering raw onions. There's no yeah. other choice for me. It's a baller move. <laughs> yeah, he's just undeniably entertaining, man. Is is there's certain people, and then there's a there's a cool thing that happens where it's just like it, he says so many things that eventually things that he says come something, out as yeah as right. Yeah, something has to be right if you just cast such a wide net. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really? he does expose shit, man. It's it's wild. Yeah, and that's where it gets dangerous too, because if he, when he's right, it, it gives it's like. Give, well, then what else yeah, is he right like, about? Right, mm -hmm. right. And then yeah. there's the fucked up things, yeah. you know, the Sandy Hook stuff, which of course was undeniable. Like, yeah. Does he awful. have remorse for it? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we we you know we we talked to him about it a little bit when he came on when we were in, in Miami, and um, but yeah, I think he realizes that that was the that was like a because that to thing. me like and I I you know. I, I have two kids and like I just think about like if you were a parent like yeah it's you, you, the, you go, this is the, unforgivable the biggest yeah. fucking tragedy you could ever imagine then have some guy be like yeah it was all fake yeah. it's like what the fuck yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you can't it. be 
He, like, I, I don't think he can even be upset as a single person who's like, I can't even look at you. Anymore. Right, right, right. 100%. Yeah, I, I think he ran into a lot of problems, too, because it's one thing where if he was doing this on his radio show out of Austin, like 1994, yeah. then there's, you know, maybe like 50,000 people that might tune in and listen to it. And they understand, like, Alex is insane and in what he says and true. But right. once his audience gets so big, then there are some people that are already mentally unhinged that will listen to you say yeah. that. Mm. And then they will just spend the rest of their lives harassing those families. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's just unforgivable shit where it's, you're putting a family that's gone through hell through more They're and more hell. hell. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then that, that, I think he actually just had to pay like tens of millions of dollars. Good. Really? Yeah, yeah, no, they went after him hard. And I think that yeah. there are gonna be a couple more uh, cases that are going to bring him, you know, he's he's not going to be a wealthy man anymore. I think he's in the January 6th thing. They're trying to come after him for that as well. Yeah. Now, to, to Alex's credit, he was up there with a <laughs> microphone and he was like, he was like, don't. He, he was like, <laughs> all right, we're going to take your country back. Hand over fist. Bring your pitchforks. No, no, don't go inside. Don't go. Stop going. Yeah. Stop going inside, yeah. please. You Which I, a that, I, I was saying uh, the other week that like in the January 6th thing, Alex Jones is either in this microcosm, either a pussy or a fraud. Yeah, because he was saying the entire election was stolen. And if you actually believe that the government stole the election and essentially threw democracy, run it up. Out, then run it yeah, up. You should be going you into the Capitol. Run it up. You yeah. shouldn't be standing outside and be like, no, no, not that hard. No, no take gonna... it back even one more. If yeah. you really think that Hillary Clinton's a lizard, yeah. right. go get it. Right. If, you, if you think they're all fucking kids, right. yeah. what are we waiting for? Right. Yeah. So yeah. It, you, it's either you can think they're having sex with children on an island and that they're all lizards, or you don't. Right. Because if you really believe that to be true, you, gotta go do something about you wouldn't it. wait for the election results. Right. Right. Well, I still believe in democracy, even though they're lizards. Right. Yeah. Like, right? like the Q shaman. He walks into the, the uh, uh, House of Representatives. He's standing like behind the podium holding his little trident over his head or whatever. Yeah. Like respect to that guy because he believed in it. He went for and it. And he went yeah. in there. Yeah. But there's so many people that don't really believe, but they're stirring people up trying to yeah, get them to Yeah, they just want to be part of it. That's why I respected that motherfucker that pulled up to the pizza shop in D.C. Yeah, if you think Comet that they're kids. Or whatever. Yeah, if you think that they're kids. Oh, you yeah. Think that kids are locked in a basement yeah. that are getting fucked. Yeah. If you believe that, go. And they, they literally, he went there and then they arrested him and he didn't shoot. He put the gun down. The cops came up. He didn't fight or anything. It's like there's no basement. They're, literally. <laughs> yeah. They're like, they're yeah. like, why are we there? He goes, I thought it was a pedophile ring. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, then they're like, all right. Uh, like, I mean, like, I think he's in jail. You shouldn't be able to do these things. Like, call the cops, make them do something about right. it. But let's say you're calling the cops, like, we're not going to go check it out. We're not going to go check it out. And you have children. You're gonna have some compassion for yeah. those kids in the basement. Yeah. yeah, completely reasonable response. And like when when Alex went on his whole 9/11 kick, it was like, yeah, if you think that that George Bush actually knocked down these towers himself, yeah. then you should be you should be like in Washington D.C. every day throwing grenades at the White House. That's like, crazy. That's fucked yeah. up. <laughs> that's, <laughs> boy no, no, you, you nope. should be disavow. You sh you should be if, if you actually believe you it. You better but, hope your dad didn't have kids <laughs> with his daughter. Because <laughs> everybody fought it about that tomorrow boy <laughs> but the fact that you're not doing it tells me you don't actually believe it right that's right. the thing you say be about that life yeah be yeah. about that life I, I i'm with you that's why on some level i kind of fucked with the the january 6th shit is like you believe this to be true you have to do something about it because that is the fall of democracy right it's also the most entertaining thing yeah <laughs> like it's, it's, it's way more entertaining is it not yeah it's all nothing yeah Remember Neil deGrasse Tyson? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all nothing. Nothing, none of this matters. Yeah. Yeah. Did none you really matters. think the president plots the course of America? You think the greatest country in the history of the world gets the course plotted every four years, and then we just switch it up? Mm -hmm. They're there, so you have someone to be angry at. Yeah. Right. Right. They're the liar. Or someone who you like feel good about. If the economy's good, we love them. Yeah. If the economy sucks, they're the liar. And then we just whip them. Ah, you're an asshole. You fucked everything up. And then the new guy comes in. That's why I don't understand why anybody would want to be president. No, yeah, it's a no, stupid it's, job. It's the what, dumbest what job ever. loser would want to just be yelled at? Yeah. It's a bad job. No. It's people. I don't trust anyone that wants to be president. Any public yeah. office. Literally, the first requirement for being in public office should be you don't want to do it. Right. Yeah. It should be like you enacting. <laughs> she be like, yeah, but we were like, I don't want, I do not, don't make me run for senator. I will it's never. Like, no, that president. guy's going to be senator. He really doesn't want to. Do, no, it's it's is the it most odd? narcissistic thing you could do is be like, I want to have so much power, I can decide laws. Yes. for all these people. I, I have no how idea. You should live yeah. better than you. Yeah. You know what they used to do back in Sparta? They used to take everybody's name and they'd put it in a giant hat. Everybody that was above the age of like thirty, and then every couple years they would draw a name out. 
and that person would be the mayor or the governor of that city it. state begrudgingly yeah. so like, and no one wanted to do it yeah. but what it did which is i mean it's terrifying to think like look around you and, and realize the people that you know they could be in charge of your everyday life but at the same time it also makes you want to educate every child that's growing up in your city state because you're like any one of these little fuckers yeah. could end up running oh, the show yeah. it's yeah that's a great point too yeah yeah you can't let someone fall behind because mm -hmm. they could be in charge and you got to kick someone into that pit if they're a little crazy that's right yeah. like if at 29 he's a lunatic it's like sorry dude Adios. you're not get, you're not in the lottery this year yeah that's yeah. why they all want to join the military they're like i'd rather die in battle than end up getting <laughs> my name or have to run this shit. fucking hat <laughs> yeah <laughs> have, have people, the right idea people complain about rent prices yeah <laughs> fuck yeah. that uh all right so wait uh what nicks and then who else uh jets or giants whoever's worse and what? Uh, what? Uh, yeah, what just, the fuck? it's just suffering at this point. But uh, Knicks, I mean, I grew up playing basketball. So yeah. like Knicks and then I'm a big boxing fan. Like, I, I mean, my dad used to like my dad was in the news business a little bit. So he would like cover fights and shit like that. So I'm kind of like legacy boxing fan. And now MMA, I, I'm just, you know, really kind of excited about. Yeah, I mean, MMA too. is the best. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is. Uh, UFC, I don't know how they do it, but like I I'm a I'm not like a diehard UFC guy, but yeah. I'm like a buy the big pay per view. Yep. And it feels like every other week's a big pay per view. Bro, it was what? like you got to buy this one. It's like fuck, I got I got to buy this. And you buy every single. Yeah, one. it's like yeah, you're right. I do have to buy and, it. And do you notice what the crowd looks like even for the prelims? Have you picked up on that? Like, yeah, yeah. If you look at a boxing match, like we're not watching until Mayweather's fighting. Right. And nobody there is either. Right. It's empty. It's totally empty. It's like the family and then like whatever country the guy's from, like <laughs> the like most diehard, yeah, 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 like yeah. people from that, that country and that's it. But UFC, if you watch even the prelims, yeah. it's full. It's true. It's full. Everybody's locked in on the story. They've got these like really engaging characters. They fucking got it, man. They understand yeah. that if you have, if you have a series of fights where every single fight could end in a devastating knockout, like the most violent, like kick to the head. Yeah. People will show up early and 100%. watch that stuff. No yeah, one wants yeah. to show up to watch like a, a 10 round boxing match between two guys that they've never heard of before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's much more conducive to the casual. Yeah. yeah. Unless it gets maybe into like the grappling stuff. I think people are tired of that. But. Although I actually, I find myself like, I can't remember. I think it was maybe two weeks ago. Um, There was a pay-per-view I bought and I was actually like, I kind of wish there was one of these fights was a grappling fight. Like it was a lot of stand up. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe this is fucked up to say, but I kind of like watching someone get choked out. There we go. Like I kind of, it, it is, there's something that's like very uh, exhilarating when a guy gets in a position and you're like, is he about to get choked out? And like that, like, will he or w won't he get choked yeah. out? I don't know. There's something about it. I don't want every fight to be like that. Yeah. But I have noticed that it feels like there's a lot more stand up. And like even Habib, who like wasn't the most exciting fighter, yeah. but when he got you on the ground, it's like it's over, dude. Yeah, it's like watching like a snake suffocate like a rat. Yeah, it's like you you know you're done. Yeah, I some about it. Maybe that's our like um, fight IQ is going up. Yeah, like maybe in the beginning we just didn't really understand like the nuances of grappling or yes. positioning, and now we're like, oh, he's trying to set up an. Yeah, like oh, oh he oh, doesn't have the neck. Oh, he does yeah. have the neck. Yeah, yeah. 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 credit that's to Joe possible. Rogan. Like we were talking about, listening to anybody that's passionate about something. When you hear Joe Rogan talking about a fight as it's happening, oh, he like he knows it. his shit he's and obsessed. and he loves it. Yeah, and it makes you kind of understand when you hear you know the inflection in his voice get a little higher yeah. when somebody's got somebody's back. You as a casual fan, I can't tell like oh his yeah. oh the hook's in. Like I don't know yeah. if the hook is yeah. in or not. But when Joe says it, I'm like oh fuck. It's the hook, the yeah, hook it's and I get excited about and it. I respect the hell out of anyone like Joe who has one sport they're very passionate about and yeah. does not give a fuck nothing about else anything. like you could yeah, tell yeah. him who's like the MVP for the NFL and he's like I don't care mm -mm. I I wish I had a life that I was like it was as simple as that you love all sports all sports so but like it's it's exhausting you know why why no because I'm, I'm like, oh yeah because I, I mean I gamble right part so of it's it. yeah interesting 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 but I also love all sports. I, I like I love college basketball. I love college football. Like, but I wish that I could. I always get a little jealous of people who are like, this is my sport and I don't care about anything else. Now, OK, so for you, it's tied to the stakes and the exhilaration of game. Do, do you feel the same way? Uh, a little bit. But for me, it's just mostly like that's what I grew up doing was watching sports. And yeah. that was like my entire day. Yeah. If I wasn't playing sports, do I was you know why watching you were sports with my dad. It? Like what? 
I think it was just my family, like my my dad, my grandparents. That's yeah. all we would do would be just watch sports together. It was and like talk bonding about time. Yeah, and, yeah, it was bonding time. Exactly. And you probably have some like great laughs, some some great moments. You get to see, you know, your your pops and your grandfather, these people that you admire. You get to see them being really excited about something. You are fucking jumping and hugging like yeah. these like early memories are tied to to sports. And yeah. I'm sure that like gets baked into our brain somewhere, and like yep. we're trying to like recreate those emotions, mm-hmm. right? That makes sense. And then you add gambling on top of yeah, it. Yeah, because like I love sports regardless of gambling, but, but it's you way add, more fun when I have when I have action on it. That's dude, the thing, I'm almost like I I'm I'm I almost get like scared to gamble on the sports I really love because then it's like putting Molly in the drink. Do you know what I, yeah. do you know what I mean? Fun? A little bit. Yeah. It's like I already love this. Yeah. Do I do I want to taint that? Yeah, or like betting on your favorite teams. That's always the worst. Yeah. Oh, if you bet on other teams, you can actually be more objective about it. Betting on you, yeah, it's hard I mean, to. Yeah, you lose anyway. But yeah, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Object, yeah, you know, I'm always so smart when I bet on other teams. You can yeah. hedge against your, <laughs> against like your future misery too. So I'm a Commanders fan, and if I'm watching, if I'm watching a team that's going to kick the shit out of them. Yeah. Sometimes I'll bet on the other team because then I'll be like, okay, it's not that big of a deal that we lost because yeah. I'm so smart. I knew that was going to happen, so yeah. I put my money on them. See, I can't softens yeah. a blue. A little I bit. can't do it. I'm all in or all out. Like I'll, 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 I won't bet against the Bears. Yeah. I'll be like, I'll stupidly tell myself the Bears are going to win, even though I know they aren't, mm-hmm. and like bet on them. And then you put it down because like I don't ever want my team to win and then be like mad that I lost a bet because uh, like I just either like it's like push it all in. Or double misery avoid. or double happiness. See, to me, if I lost that bet, I look at that as cost of doing business. It's like I paid for that win. <laughs> yeah, I can't. You know, like I'll, I'll trade that it. any day. I can't. Now, do will it. you guys bet on TV shows? What do you mean? Like, will you put some money on like uh, The Bachelor, or, like Love on the Spectrum? I, they they don't really have like they don't have those regulated because they're all taped, so you could figure out what uh, what's yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good but point, if I good if there was like a market for it, yes. Yeah. Of course. Why have not? Betting on Love on the Spectrum yeah, yeah. would be exhilarating. Spectrum, yeah, why not? I have not seen it. It's I, the best I've seen show. the commercials of it. You haven't watched it? I no. haven't watched it. Oh, guys. What is it? They're dating autistics. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Like, and where, 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 is it, where can you watch it? It's on Netflix. It's on, I think, just Netflix. Maybe okay. others. But, like, I mean, it's the most amazing show you've ever seen in your entire really? life. Because autistic people don't know how to lie. Right. So they just say like exactly ugly, how they right, feel, like, right, right in front. Right. Like, I mean, he just asked his mom if she was done talking. Like, she's like, are you done? And then, like, he's this fat Indian kid that looks like a, like a Koopa Trooper, you know, the shit Mario would jump on. And, like, he's super autistic. And they just try to, they really are throwing everything at him. They threw a Down syndrome at him. Like, just anything that they got. This is just, a real show? Bro, it's the best show that you've ever watched Holy in your life. They got shit. Australian accents and they're autistic. And some of them have autistic accents, which is from watching video games all the time. Holy so you pick fuck. up the. I didn't the know this lang- was a real show. It sounds like I'm making it. it up. Yeah, no, it sounds like you're completely no, 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 no. making it up. If there's a kid that sounds like, like Wario, I'm in. Say again? If there's a kid that sounds like Wario, I'm all in. Uh, I don't know if they're going with those characters. <laughs> hey. I think it's more just like Wait, the- so they're like they're like, let's put in let's let's put autistic kids and like make money off of them uh being like truthful and trying to find love, but the Ted Bundy jokes gotta go? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. And like that's also, way what you described as a show is way more like, whoa, this is kind of fucked yeah, it up. It seems way more fucked up. Yeah. But this is just what we do. Like, you know how we just go more and more extreme? Yeah. You know, it's just like, oh, that's actually kind of interesting. Like, you can't really judge <laughs> this is fucked up. Uh, you can't really judge uh uh Elon's dad for like the stepdaughter thing if like that's the best porn. <laughs> That's true. Right. Yeah. Like, no, if that's right. what he's been looking if, at. If that's the number one porn that's out right now. Yeah. His stepdaughter. And he's out there like, I'm leaving it in. My right. question like, is like, was she up. was she stuck anywhere yeah. when he found her? Was she like trying to get yeah, clothes out of the dryer? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying like Brazzers is actually the one to blame. That, listen, if you normalize it. Yeah. Elon Sr. is going to fucking go for it. Now we're going all the way to the other side of the spectrum. We're like, get, got to get rid of gambling. Got to get rid of porn. Got to get rid of weed. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, I know. Let's, but let's not go crazy. No, I know. I know. But, but we're talking our way into it. We got to stop. Catholics, <laughs> run it back. Every 2,000 years, boys, <laughs> run it back. Right? That's like, I, I do love that there's always like there's one politician who's like porn is the problem for society. And like he could people could agree with him like 99 percent. And then they says that like, no, fuck. Fuck you. Mm. You're out. Yeah, you're yeah. Look at that cock. Fuck that guy. Yeah. No. yeah, you're not taking my porn. 
for my, fuck my, that. For my that is, dry, that is, sticky hands, yeah. you can have this. Yeah, like they, they could make laws that, you know, make us do everything. It's like, no, 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 don't take our porn. No. Do not do that. No, no, no. We need we need the <laughs> There porn. is one. There's always, I I can't, I think there's one maybe in Ohio or Yeah, maybe, I think it's J.D. Vance. Yeah, who's like, we got to get rid of porn. It's like, this all guy it, fucking sucks. Yeah, all of it? Yeah, he's yeah. Like, porn is corrupting society. Not all of it. Yeah. yeah. They try he to wants do it, it all. In, in fucking uh, Japan, they started blurring the dicks. Yeah. yeah and I, I just like assume that. the guy who wants all the porn gone, he just wants to keep it for himself. Oh, so he's, he's like, I'll give me your porn. I'll I'll hold it safely, and then well, it'll just be g- jerking off all the time. Do you know what happened after they blurred the dicks? What happened? They started sicking fucking octopuses in there. Yeah. So yeah, because like well, that's no not dicks. a dick, but yeah. you need something dick like. Right. So now it's even worse because they need it. But they did it, I think, because they weren't procreating. Like they had to like, teach too much them porn. how to date. Yeah. 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 I guess too much porn. Eh, no, fuck that. Don't take our porn. No, no. I'm not saying take our porn, but like there's it's there's a limit. Like yeah, yeah. Like for me, I have a limit. Like I I I can't click on the pregnancy shit. Yeah. Like, I don't like that. Why mm-hmm. not? Ken Bone was a big fan of that. Yeah. Who? You remember that guy, Ken Bone, with the red sweater from the debates back in, like, 2016? He, like, he just popped up in one of the debates. He's, like, a dude from Iowa. Oh, guys, I he... thought you were talking about a porn star. Oh, no, oh, yeah, no. that makes he sense. He probably could be. The debates? Yeah, his name was Ken Bone. Ken Bone, the yeah. The master debate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then everyone found his, like, Reddit history. It was, like, he's just into, like, pregnant Pregnant ladies. porn. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, you've had sex with your pregnant wife, I said. Yes. Fire? What, pre, uh, I mean, it's a thing. Oh, you're not. I heard. I heard it's super wet. Like it's. <laughs> no, I heard it's Sea World, dude. That's. The, I, I really did hear that. I swear to God. Log Who told you that. Um, uh, DJ Envy. Oh wait, he's the DJ Envy. Charlemagne and and uh, DJ Envy and Angela Yee. The Breakfast the one Club. Like like every other day, he has to like get in front of the TV and be like, "I cheated on my wife." Yes, but that's, part of, <laughs> yeah, that's like, part of the agreement. Oh, like constantly, hey. I feel like every time I see him, he's like, "Yeah." So and, and by the way, like, dragging him around. Fire. Yeah. yeah, he's dragging <laughs> him around. Like you cheated again. Let's go on fucking Wendy yeah. Williams yeah. and tell everyone you cheated. One hundred percent. That guy. Wh- why? Why wouldn't he stop cheating? Like every time, he's just getting fucking. That is a good Roasted. point. Yeah, he is getting killed and he is kind of getting, but at the same time, I don't know, maybe he likes, he really likes pregnant pussy. I mean, she's got like seven kids. She's got so many kids because he's into that. Wait, was he cheating on her with a pregnant woman? Probably. No, yeah, yeah, probably. But no, no, seriously, I, honestly, I'm not joking. Like there's at least, I think two or three times where I've seen him like sad dog face yeah. sitting with his wife and then like, he, had to admit he, he cheated again. He had to orgasm for 10 years. <laughs> what? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, this guy's somebody, like, a, a, he's addicted to getting abused. On TV. But listen, everybody has their kinks. Yeah, I guess you know that's his kink. I shouldn't kink shame. You're and, right. And that's okay. But what I'm trying to say is, did you like it better? I, I don't think there was like a, a noticeable difference. No, there wasn't like a, wow, this is awesome. Really? No, I no. Do you have any kids? No kids. No kids. <laughs> right. nope. I'm just wondering. I don't know. That's what he said. He's like, yo, pregnant pussy is the juiciest. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yo, he said that. Maybe, maybe one, crazy. either her water was breaking at the Whoa, time. That's a possibility. So. Or, I think so. Or two, maybe that's part of his arrangement where his wife is like, "You better tell him how good this pregnancy was." <laughs> I think that could be it as well. Like, if he's, if he's already admitting to cheating, he's got to be like, "Yo, this is the best pussy yeah. ever." But maybe it is. We don't know. I guess that's also like a. You got to run it back. Have another kid. It, yeah, got to have another kid. I already have yeah. two. He's uh, he's on high tide. He's on. He's on yeah. radio. <laughs> Every day, right? Every day. I think that's also like part of like if you are doing radio every day, it's like, well, we got to talk about something. Let's talk about pregnant pussy. Yeah. Like, like maybe you should just take a week off. He suggested it to me. I didn't even ask him about it or anything. You got to try this? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. He was like, nah, pregnant pussy is the best or something like that. Like, And he's like, the more pregnant, the better. Like, oh, my God. Dude, eight months, dude. Are you going to have kids ever? Uh, yeah, soon, I think. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. There you go. We're going through some therapy right now to get ready. Okay. Yeah. Your right. whole like. I know it's cliche, but your whole worldview will change. I hope. Yes. I, for the better. Okay, so here's my here's a theory that obviously I have with no proof, but I think part of like the everybody being outraged about things is we're waiting too long to have kids. Yeah, I agree. Because there is like once you have kids, the, the little shrinks, things right? the little things do not bother you as much. Yeah. Where it's like, like I racism, don't have time. sexism, like Yeah, I don't have time for that. I just want my kid <laughs> to be like a good kid. Yeah. No, it's true though. <laughs> no, but I, but I guess I guess to that point is like, how much time do you have to be part of these movements when you're None. Like keeping a kid alive? Right, exactly. Right, and also there's like a you can be angry about something, and then I go home and like my son's like, let's watch Paw Patrol. I'm like, cool. Uh, I forgot what I was angry about. Yeah, and that is the best. Like that is the best feeling. So maybe 
the key to all this is we start having kids earlier so that we can focus. Now you're back to pedophilia. <laughs> We're going hold full on, circle. Hold on. I didn't say <laughs> how have, early. I didn't say have sex with them. I didn't say have sex with them. Just get them pregnant. But yeah, just get them pregnant. Yeah. Wait, you that's guys a, are saying that. That's you a, guys are no, saying that, that. Not me. You might be right though, because yeah. it is. I yeah, yeah. I never even thought about it that way. But when it did is you lose like, your virginity. Uh, I was like 17. 17. You? Yeah, I was 18. 18. Oh wow, you guys kept it legit. So Late you guys bloomers. haven't even slept with minors. No, no, I've never. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. no, as a minor, yeah. Well, it depends, well, it depends it what state, what state, 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 state. Yeah. You're right, it wasn't in Mississippi. <laughs> no, but on the other hand, it's kind of nice being selfish in your 20s. Okay. Like not, like getting no, to right. just do whatever the fuck you want yeah. for a while, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, that's that's something that I think uh, it, it leads to a little bit more growth through your 20s because I think sometimes when you have kids, it's like that's when a part of your life starts or stops growing and a yeah. different part of your life starts growing after yeah. that. But you know what the craziest thing is when you have kids though? Like, cause I, oh, how I'm 37. So I was 34 when my son was born. My daughter was born when I was 36. I do wish that I had him younger because I now think like when he's 20, I'm going to be, you know, 50 or whatever. It's like, that's going to kind of suck. Like, or 55, like I'm going to be a little older. Cause you guys, you like, I like wish I was, I wish my kids when they were in their twenties, I was like just hitting 50. So I had like, you know, the energy and everything to like you want to like hoop with them yeah or, and like just be sports, like yeah, yeah like i don't want to be like super old you know what yeah. i mean so i think that's a natural thing too they, but you have to have the kid to realize that yeah because all my 20s i was like i don't want fucking kids yeah and then it, like my caveman brain flipped and was like oh yeah i want one of these yeah yeah you start Maybe thinking about like in. your age when you're going to be a dad at the wedding right and all right that stuff. it kind of fucks you up you're oh, like really? oh shit yeah like oh yeah oh. Like, graduation all that yeah Were your parents old uh no they're regular age okay yeah i mean they were like yeah. in their 30s mid 30s so i guess that might yeah. be old yeah i don't I know i mean for for us yeah i think that's older because people were having kids yeah yeah them. so i guess yeah they were on the older side yeah. yeah mine were too and i think maybe that's why we waited a little longer yeah right to have kids i think if you have younger parents it just seems more normal that you would do it younger yeah and i'm yeah. always like jealous of like i see the people who are like oh yeah like that's my like a 20 year old like my grandmother's 60. it's like what yeah. that's kind of sick yeah, yeah like yeah, you yeah. get to live you know what i mean like yeah. i don't have any grandparents that's left. when you'll feel old I yeah think. when you're a grandparent and yeah. your grandkids are let's see your kids now are what they're three and one three and one so you got at least another well under your fucking fucked up rules 12 years uh, yeah i was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking like, I, so my, my mom was 42 when she had me. And Whoa. That, and that's definitely, and back then that Those was like, old yeah, eggs, that, was, that was an old, that Did was an old age. Did you have any issues growing up? Uh, no, I, I mean, I'm only 5'8", so that's a problem. That probably had something to do with it. You think that was it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> you, you, wait, your dad was, your dad's tall or no? Uh, no, my dad's 5'10", okay. 5'11". And your mom? My mom's 5'2". 5'2", so that's about it. 5'2", yeah. but, but yeah, so yeah. she was all on the older side when she had me. Yeah. And then I definitely have what you were talking about. 42, where, dude. where I keep thinking like, oh, I've got... Dude, your dad's an assassin, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> to hit that Stick at 42? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Credit credit to Papa D. What, uh, what is he? What's his background? Uh, uh, he's a he, lawyer in Miami. No, like he's, he's Spanish. <laughs> uh, yes, dude. Is he Cuban? He's Swedish. He's, he's Swedish. A, he's about as far from Cuban Cuba as you can get. Yeah. Fuck, dude. That doesn't make any sense, yeah. man. <laughs> but I, I definitely feel that where it's like, okay, I've still got forty two. Forty two. Was yeah. there a position that they did? <laughs> I I don't know. Wheelchair? I don't know. <laughs> She was, she had her walker with the tennis balls, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like I I will wait to have kids, but then once I have kids, I want those little fuckers to have grandkids ASAP. Right, you know, for like you, I, right. yeah, for me, right. for me. Exactly. Oh, being a great being a grandparent is like the greatest thing ever because they don't they, they just get to get all the benefits. So like, your parents, they get to like they get to it. hang out, yeah, 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 and then they get to go. Were you like, where was this with me? Yeah, like, right. When you see them yeah, right. with it's your like, with, what the fuck? No, yeah. but they get like, oh yeah, we'll read a couple books. We'll read yeah. as many books as you want where it's like i'm like all right we're reading two books tonight like that's it i want to i want to go fucking sit on the couch <laughs> it, is it the gift you give your parents for raising you yeah i think so and it also makes you realize like holy fuck like i i was an asshole you know what i mean and like yeah, yeah, yeah. that wasn't easy yeah yeah because yeah. you realize that you understand them now. yeah oh yeah, yeah you're yeah. like okay this makes a lot more sense like yeah. i hated you for no reason yeah and i'm sure i'll go through the same thing where my kids will like be in their teenage years and they'll hate me yeah i'm like this sucks so so there's another thing it's like you've you've waited my parents waited I, i'm gonna end up waiting we've all we all waited to understand what it was like for our parents to raise us 
if we were having kids in our 20s, at 23, we're looking at our parents like, yo, my bad. Like, yeah. how can I help? Them? Right, like, right. Oh, I didn't realize that I was like this. And then we have this like a much deeper bond yeah. probably yeah. with our parents. Now we wait so long that we were shipping our parents off to these different homes. And but that that's, kind of that's also just life in general where you just, you look back and you're like, when I was 25, I fucking wish I knew everything that I know now. You why like, is it wasted on the young? Yeah, right. But it really is the truth because you're like, I was a fucking asshole, dude. And, how and none, of none, none of this mattered. Nothing. None of this mattered. And, and like, yeah, that's the crazy. Getting thing, good like, grades and all that shit. Like, I obviously it matters a little bit because you want to, you know, learn. But yeah. like, stressing out about things that just are completely inconsequential. Yep. It sucks to look back at, dude. How fast was? Okay. Zero to ten felt like it took forever. 10 to 20, so it was pretty long, but it was a little bit shorter. 20 to 30. Yeah. Lightning. Lightning. 30 to 40. Yeah, how old are you? I'm 38. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're about the same age. We're both 37. Th yeah. I was 29 yes. two weeks ago. Yes, yes. It's by far the fastest. Yeah. Holy shit. I've been telling shit. myself, like, oh, you got time. You're not 40 yet. And it's like, wait, no, I'm going to be 38 in January. Mm -hmm. Fuck, I, it's over. I actually yeah. feel like my 20s took forever. And then my 30s so far. Then they just went. Been like, it's been like two years of my 20s. See, my 20s, it's, it's I feel seven. like, went so fast. But that was also cocaine. So that's <laughs> like, I mean, but yeah, 30s, like, blink of an eye as well. Do you Not still cocaine. do coke? No, no. You stop? Yeah, every now and then. It's it's fun or what? I've never done coke. Oh, really? No. Yeah, but the the it's like scary now because of the fentanyl shit. Yeah. So I don't fuck with, you know, like, it's fucked up now. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't understand how, like, a 25 year old goes out and just like parties like that. Dude, and like, they do it like crazy. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. when I was coming up, Coke was still kind of naughty. Right. Like it was kind of bad to do Coke. Right. Now they do it like weed. Right. Like, right. It's true. It's just as normal as like drinking. It's like, oh, we're going to go out. I'll probably take a bump and then I'll do whatever. It mm -hmm. is funny to think about weed too, like how just normal it is now. Cause like that's another thing. We was. need Catholicism again. Bro. Yeah. Take we're our porn, to take the, our weed, take our Coke, take our Coke, leave a little. <laughs> everything in moderation we can yes. do a little bit of porn yeah you can do everything in moderation do a that's little bit true. of coke yeah do a little bit of weed yeah drink our large sodas that's it yeah Dude, let us have it you're so right though about weed like back in the 90s people were getting shot like the yeah the police were raiding people and shooting them for weed because they had weed like yeah. there was there were like governments in Mexico and Jamaica shooting down planes yeah. because they had like 50 pounds of weed on them. Yeah. I, I even thinking about like even five years ago when it's like, oh, I was in California. Can I bring this weed back to New York? And now it's like, <laughs> what, like, what are they going to say if they find it? Like, well, oh, OK, throw it out. OK. Or it's legal everywhere. Well, once it's legal everywhere. OK, maybe not once it's legal. Everywhere. Once the government is making money on something, do you have to let the criminals out of jail? I think so. Yeah who were convicted yes. because they were doing yes. it. Now, granted, they did break the law. There was a law. Regardless if it was right or wrong, they broke it. Right. So I understand you're being punished for breaking the law, but at the same time, like if you're making money. Yes, absolutely. That's the most hypocritical thing you could have. That's why. I feel like yeah. they've already, they've served their punishment for it. Yeah. And I think what the state of New York's doing, because they're starting to legalize everything from, from growing to selling, eventually, uh, they're giving the licenses to open up like the weed distribution to people that have convictions on their record in the past. Oh, really? Of, yeah, of distributing weed. They get like first dibs on it, which I think is actually one of the only good things that New York City has done from a political standpoint in a while. But this is yeah. a slippery slope because like under your world order, because Lane Maxwell is coming out of jail tomorrow. So she should be the first person to open up the kid fucking factory. Yeah, because you're like, hey, let's just start fucking kids again. <laughs> That's what you said, right? I think it, I think that was it. Right? <laughs> that's what that's I think what that's the, in my new special. The streaming think, service yeah. was like Andrew. <laughs> we should cut that. This one is a little too far. I'm like, like I'm fighting for this. No, one. I I'm standing up and telling people they can fuck. There you. are certain voices that need to be heard. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm the truth. I'm the truth teller of society. <laughs> exactly is what you said. <laughs> what happened to Ghislaine? She uh, got convicted. She got locked, Everyone's just right? been waiting for her to die. She's and, uh, and she hasn't. I yeah. think she got like 20 years. Yeah. So she didn't snitch. She did not snitch on anybody, no. Wow. But she, but she has that trump card in her back pocket. I think that she could play at any moment. For what? So she could. I don't know if she wanted to turn some powerful people in. She'll never do it. Nothing's going to change. She's just. She's got her burn book that she knows in her head. Mm. She knows. I mean, if you look at the case and all the files that they had at uh, at Epstein's house inside of his safe. Yeah. He had a giant safe 
that was filled with like spreadsheets. The dude was meticulous about his pedophilia. Like <sighs> he kept a detailed log of his guests. He had videotapes of his guests because he was probably working for the CIA yeah. and getting blackmail on people. And he had uh, he had just uh, terabytes and terabytes of data about who has been to his island, who has slept with who, all that stuff. It was in a safe. The uh, I think it was the FBI raided his apartment. They saw the safe. They couldn't get the safe open. After they took all the other stuff from his apartment, they left his apartment, and then Epstein's lawyer went back to the apartment, got everything, got everything out of the safe, removed it, and then the FBI went back to the apartment. They're like, "Oh shit, the safe's empty Jeez. now." Jeez, I mean, that's, that's to me, that's so unbelievable that like they could be at a crime scene. There's a safe that they can't open. They just leave, let some lawyer walk in. Yeah, we'll be back Wednesday. He walks out with a backpack, yeah. and then everything's fine. Like that has to be. That's yeah. I, yes. I, I actually inside. I, I'm fully. I've Alex Jones myself on yeah. on the whole Epstein situation okay. because I know if you if you connect all the dots, the dude was working for the CIA. Right. He was brought up. If you look at his background, yeah. he came from nothing. He got a job on Wall Street. He got a job at one of the best schools in New York City teaching. Yeah. From the father of Bill Barr, who was the Attorney General of the yes. United States. Yeah. And then he he who was the current director of the CIA. Yes. Or at that time. He was and, the director, and, yeah. and he he cultivated uh, all these different networks of people that had information about like what the big financial sectors were going to do. So that's how he was making his money on Wall Street. Mm. He befriended the most powerful people in the world. Got them in a honeypot operation where he would fly them to his island. They would compromise themselves, and guess what? Now you're informing to me, and I've got all the dirt on you. Yeah. And he was working for the CIA as well on their payroll. And then he gets arrested, and he gets a sweetheart deal for like I don't know, hundred, two hundred counts of pedophilia. Yeah, this is down in Palm Beach. Yeah, and they just let yeah, him off yeah. for it. Yeah. If you look at the dude's Rolodex, and some of the flight logs have been made public, like I am fully, oh, I'm yeah. fully awoken on the, on the Epstein situation. Oh, yeah, he had sex with kids, bro. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah multiple. Yeah. And yeah, he yeah. like he introduced other people to his very kids. powerful people. A hundred percent. He was Jesus. running a, a vast network. So yeah. Uh, but I yeah, wonder she, if he's been replaced by the internet. Hmm. Like you needed to honeypot these people so you can get incriminating things on them. Oh, you think they're spying on all of our it's internet? Now they got your phone. Like yeah. now they know what porn you're doing. Now they know where you are. Like I wonder if he just became. Uh, or his method of spying is just antiquated. Yeah. So they just had to get him out of there. Yeah. It's like I, the I, old I, guard. I really wonder. Like. Yeah. No. You're you're not wrong. Like because the, the internet, idea is yeah. like we can't put you in a position of power. We and again I don't know who the fuck we, we is, but like it's dangerous to put someone in a position of power if uh, you don't have some leverage over them. Right. Right. And that was the thing that was probably terrified them about Trump. They're like, hold on. How the fuck is he here? Right. He, like, we don't have any leverage. Like, right. What the right. fuck? Mm -hmm. like, what, what do you mean he'll just say anything? Okay, drop the thing about the pussy. Like what, what? It's like all these things happen and there was no way to really rein him in. So they literally just like, all right, don't let him talk. They take away Twitter. Right. They literally just had to be like, when he's talking, he's too effective. Yank away the Twitter. Yeah. Who's I, they? I actually think the deal with Trump was uh, he... He had so many things that people were trying to attack him for mm -hmm. that you couldn't possibly focus in on one thing on him. So it was, uh, it was harder to damage him because he would just he's so good at playing defense against everything. Yeah. And he'll punch back on everyone. So it's like you got some guy talking about the Access Hollywood tape. You got another guy talking about like when he uh, like put uh, dead rats in an apartment to try to kick all the bums <laughs> out. Or whatever. So there's so many things and it's all scattered Shit. that none of it's even going yeah. deep enough to do any real damage. Yeah. Still. yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I think we covered everything. Yeah. Pretty much. Right? Yeah. All right. So I got one last question. Talk it's a rollback question. Yeah. Uh, R-H-O-B-A-C-K dot com. Use code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. Q-Zips, hoodies, polos. We'll get you some. Um, what do you think about Jalen Brunson? <laughs> we'll just go from <laughs> that. Jalen Brunson, yes or no? Yes. Yes? Sure. That was such a like sad... The, like, I want, everyone I want was like, Jaylen dude, Brunson Jalen Brunson good. is good. I want him to be good. I want him to be great. Something but he's happened. not that. <laughs> the Knicks were like, we him, need him. Would they give him 100? I don't even know. They, 10 or something they spent like, like three weeks just trying to get Jalen Brunson. Only the yeah. Knicks would be in like a very public, like everyone's like, dude, he's a good player, but you're way overpaying for him. And they still were like, nope, we need him. Yeah. And then like that's, I feel like the Knicks just are the kings of getting the good not great players yes and being like maybe it works and then us over inflating them i kind of actually like now that i'm saying it i kind of like james dolan's process strategy yeah because i i as a gambling brain i think the same thing where it's like maybe this is maybe it's just like everyone just plays their best for an entire season 
he's trying to money ball it, <laughs> yeah. but just with no clue, like if people are good or not. Right. And he's also playing like, let's sign people and just hope for the absolute best, best case outcome. scenario yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I like that. That is a gambling brain of like, yeah. Yeah. this is the one that's going to work. Yeah. 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 So I think I'm a, I think I'm a James Dolan fan. I mean, oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. it's so You've funny. You've converted me. Thank you to a pedophile and James <laughs> Dolan fan. There, nah, yeah. He's sensitive. <laughs> Dolan's sensitive. Oh, Dolan. he's he. uh uh, we got we 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 put up a uh, T-shirt once about him like fire season and, desist and he was like he got he basically like personally was like take it down yeah. through like back channels like instantly it was he like how the be- fuck do you know like yeah. it's like that like how how did you even see it because they got people in the system and everybody's loyal to him you know what I mean the fish rots from the head down right so yeah. like everybody's trying to impress him he even had like spies in the organization not spies but like people that were loyal to him when Phil was there yeah and that's why Phil was like I'm out I can't even do anything right right I forget the guy's name who the fuck is he that's why it's crazy to me yeah. oh yeah well, uh, what was his name Donnie something no I'll 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 Google it afterwards. But there was a guy there who was just there to do to basically report back. To right Dylan. now he's loyal as fuck. Like he got your back no matter what. Right. I think Isaiah Thomas is still working there. Yes, mm-hmm. I think you so. I mean? Like didn't he sexually assault a chick and then he made him work for the WNBA part? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and he was like the worst crazy. GM of all time yeah, and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, I guess that's like if, if you're, you're just loyal, that loyal, yeah. yeah, then people are going to be drawn to you because they're like, but I want job you to be for loyal life. to us. Yeah, like let's have a winning. I mean, New York is a basketball city. I don't think people realize this. It like, is. It is pure basketball. We grew up playing basketball. None of us grew up playing hockey. Like none of us grew up playing football. Like I went to, I went to, I grew up in Manhattan. Like there was no football field for me to play at. I played my basketball games for my high school at Basketball City because right. we didn't even have a basketball gym. Right. So it's like this is all we care about. It's all we know. And if the Knicks actually won a championship, oh my God! Like whoever's on that team, you're knighted. Like, yeah, I mean the, the Knicks beat the Celtics in the first game of the season, and everyone it was like a fucking parade. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's so sensitive, bro. He, he won't even let me sit courtside, man. Really? Yeah, dude. It's like... You're banned? I'm not banned, but like, I did these but shows... But if, if you bought a ticket... I'm a season ticket holder. Okay, so... so I, I have fucking tickets. Like, I, I you don't got to give me tickets. Right. I'll go. I don't want to call you for fucking tickets or do that whole fucking rigmarole. I go. But I was doing these shows at Radio City, right? I had two shows at Radio City, sold out. They own Radio City, Madison Square Garden, and everybody's on. And usually what they do is if you have a show, they go, they put you down there, you sit next to a guy on The Sopranos for two episodes, and then you, you like, say hi, you <laughs> yep. wave at the camera. And I was going to do some, you know, I was going to try to do some funny shit with that moment. Right. Know? And um, so I hit them up about it. Like, and listen, this is not, like, half full. Like, we sold out two Radio City right, shows in right, one night. Right, right. Like, 12,000 people. We could. That's the garden if we wanted, right? Right. So it's like... And then I get the fucking, uh, and then they tell me, ah, oh, you know, uh, we heard you said some things no about the they're not going to do it. I couldn't believe it. Wow. I'm like, I'm trying to promote the shows at your venue. Right. I'm making you money. I pay you to right. come to the games already. Right. It's just Fuck. insane. He must have a full-time guy that works for him whose job is to just like scour the internet. Yes. Literally, yes. For any it. mention of James that Dolan. Jake, you should write an article about this interview about James Dolan, yeah, knowing that he'll he'll see it. absolutely read it, hundred percent. And the only reason, and I've gone, I've gone pretty wild on you know a few podcasts, but like, uh, <laughs> you said some fucked up shit. I said some wild. That's the part that we're not hearing here, where it's, <laughs> Andrew's like. They won't let me sit courtside. It's like, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go find the tape. Where he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He was on the file. island. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it for a fact. <laughs> I want to do the, you know, I want to do the garden. That's I, that's the goal, right? Yeah. So, like for the next tour, the goal is the garden. So, I, you know, I got James is the man. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> Jake. That's that's the article. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like I got to do it. Andrew, Andrew Schultz, Schultz praises. Dreams. Yeah, James Dolan says best owner in sports. Jalen Brunson home run signing. Yeah, that's what we'll get it for you. Home run, Home run signing. signing. Yeah, who's your big three? Touchdown Jalen Brunson, signing. Julius Randle, and who? Who would be? Nah, those? Julius. I, I mean, Julius got to go. Yeah. Unfortunately, but that it, was. It's not. It's like it's not his fault, but like, well, that was first year tips. So like, as a Bulls fan, I knew it. Like last year, the Knicks were great. Yeah. yeah. And everyone was like, "This is awesome." I was like, "You guys just wait." Like just he wait. he is so good at getting the most out of everyone in the middle of February, and then when they get to the playoffs, and everyone, the way I always said it is like. LeBron 
plays in fucking third gear all year. Yeah. And then when he gets to the playoffs, he goes up to fifth yeah. and sixth. It, yeah. When the Nick the Knicks Tibbs will get you to fifth and sixth gear all year. And then yeah. when you get to the playoffs, like, wait, there's no more gear? Yeah. Like we're here. You're 100 percent right. And and you see it with the guys, right? Like a guy like uh Julius Randle just can't shoot in the playoffs. And it's like, cause the D gets better. In yeah, the and they're actually like they're keying on fit. you. Yeah, and it's in a series and they're making adjustments. Nobody's yeah. playing D, especially on a big like that, who is a goofy, like weird, like tucked in left handed jumper like I'm not I'm not stepping out to the three point line right during the regular season yeah, have 44 yeah, take it please yes. playoffs I'm on that ass right and right then, you know also during the playoffs assholes get tight right yeah. like you get a little nervous you're putting up shots things get a little scary yeah and you saw it happen and uh it's really interesting to see like like there are people that you don't know are incredibly like naturally alpha I'm not trying to use that as like a manosphere term I'm like like literally like they just in them are an alpha. Right. Like, uh, there's a guy on the Raptors, you know, Fred Van Fleet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fred is an alpha. Oh, yeah. Like, ice cold. Absolutely. Does not fucking care. Plays the same during regular season, same in the playoffs. Yep. Is not scared of the moment. Mm -hmm. And then there are people that are scared of the moment. So, to go go full circle, yes. Jalen Brunson actually might be one of those guys. He has a so, little of that alpha. Because, like, at Villanova... Like you can see it, like and he. Oh, he went when, to Villanova. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah he yeah, was yeah. great at Villanova, and like when Luca was down in that series, he picked, series, up. Yeah, he picked yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, like yeah. he does have that quiet alpha. Like I know what I can do, and I'm going to do it. Yeah, that extreme, like that. What what what, what do they say? NBA confidence. Is yeah, that the term. Like yeah, and you need to have that. But let let's see what happens. I mean, like, yeah, New Yorkers. We also care if you're good at fighting so like that you know what i mean like if you're a fighter like then right. we also like like chris mm -hmm. Childs can walk any street in new york and he right. it doesn't matter right you you know what I mean? like, it doesn't matter if you hit a three-point shot if you no, if you're ready to elbow someone in charles the oakley can, yeah. can you fight like yeah. exactly like <laughs> charles oakley like I, I we just love you if you can fight or if you play hard deep we're the weirdest sports team yeah we really are like we don't deserve we don't deserve obvious and crossing people over. Right. We need someone to come in the lane and then you sit them on their ass <laughs> and then stare at them while we lose by 12. <laughs> that would be great if the Knicks just brought back like post offense. Just yeah. running it, like slowing it down like big man. Well, that's what Phil tried to do, remember? Yeah. Yeah, and, and it just was like, like what dude, the, the game has changed. Yeah, Phil, well, like, everyone we shoots have to move threes on. now. Yeah, <laughs> it's like no, it's the triangle. Trust me. <laughs> oh yeah. man, all right. So well, no hope this year. Uh, everyone, go buy the special, please. AndrewSchultz.com. We appreciate that. Sorry for running long. Um, Infamous out now. Yes, yes. Go buy it. You only can buy it for another week. So yeah. like I said, we're gonna run this Monday. Oh, so awesome. that will be the, this will be the last. This week. is the last week to go get it. Go get it. Run it the fuck up and hear all the jokes that almost got cut. Yeah, let's just let's just teach these streamers that like. You know, people like funny jokes and it doesn't matter if they're messed up and that, you know, this is what they're going to have to deal with. Because if this is successful, they can't give comics notes anymore. That's the way I look at it. That's yeah. true. Right. It's like if this, this works and it's an option, comics will do this just like they started to do YouTube. And now the streamers have to remove the note process because you can't give them anything. Yeah, because you can't <laughs> compete. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you know this. You have kids. You're going to spend more money taking them kids to fucking Disney World one weekend. I'm not going to Disney World. Oh, really? Six I never lives? went as a kid, so I'm not going. Six. Where will you take them? Where's your? Uh, wherever. I don't. Not. Not Disney World. Okay. Place, no way. You. You're not into that. No. I know. He. I know my kids would love it, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to rob them of that. Oh, that's good of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. They can have everything else, but you got to keep something away from them. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they can develop character. Yeah. Well, I buy them like Amazon now. Like my son will be like, I want to watch this show, and like I'll be like, all right, I'll just buy some of these toys. And I realize like how fucked up it is that like he watches a show, and the next day the toys there. So Disney World's out. Got you're, he, yeah. you're smart. That's grit. That's grit. That's grit. And you're a tough. <laughs> My dad. kids had everything. They yeah, didn't yeah, go to Disney World. They, they did it. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's why I think Disney ends up winning the streaming thing, though. It's like you spend more money in that weekend than like. No, it's true. Think about it. If I had to erase every streaming app right now with kids, Disney would be the last one. And, and it would be the last one to go. Wait, if you do go to Disney World. You're going to spend more money in that weekend than you'll spend on every streaming platform that True. you do for your whole life. True. So Netflix needs to create an amusement park. That's They're what trying. You're they do the here Stranger Things uh, pop up or whatever like that. But like you need something else if you're going to compete with the big boys. Yeah, that's Simple true. As that. That's a good point. All right, Andrew Schultz, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Everyone go buy it. The Andrew Schultz. Please, please. Thank like you. Power. Andrew Schultz was brought to you by our great friends over at Upstart. Upstart. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt. All online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. 
Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows that you're more than just your credit score. So rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to help you find a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day. That's really, really fast. One business day after accepting your loan. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash PMT. That's upstart.com slash PMT to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash PMT. Okay, let's wrap up. We've got the Mount Rushmore of worst gifts to receive. Hank, I think your team won the last one, so you want to you want to decide the order again? Sure. Uh, we did win the last one, two in a row. Oh, congratulations, Hank. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, let me just double check our list, make sure to see if we have a 1-1. One, one. Mm. Mm, okay. Mm, yeah, mm. all right. We'll go one, mm -hmm. and then we'll let Jake and Billy go second, and you guys can go mm -hmm. third. Okay, cool. great. I'm excited. I'm excited for this. I'm excited for a contentious Mount Rushmore. Also, reminder, Takey's Wednesday. Not to hype it up, but I'm hyping it up. It's the best Takey's yet. All right. Go. Uh, the 1-1, one, one, we are going to go with a pet. Mm. Mm. Good pet. Any specific pet? Any specific pet? Because Just a dog any wouldn't animal. be so bad. Okay. No, a dog wouldn't be bad. I mean, any oh. animal that you have to take care of, it's, like not a, it's not something that – Let's say you don't like the gift. You can, you know, pretend to like it and then kind of just forget about it. If you get an animal, like you have to take care of that animal. It doesn't matter so if it's a snake. doesn't matter if it's a dog. It doesn't matter if it's a cat. could be a so, cow. could be a chicken. A cow. So yeah. should, we put, should we put on the list uh, so uh, a pet and then in parentheses, i.e. a dog? Yeah. No, I, that's I, a I sociopathic pick. You said oh, oh, you could okay. put I, I, a cat. You could put I, a cat. That yeah, works. but you oh, said, okay. but you specifically said dog, which I thought was interesting. You said dog, yeah, yeah. Did I specifically say dog? Well, you were well, asking yeah. about dog, dog first, and you said, yeah. and you said, yeah, dog. A dog be a bad gift. Yeah, I believe you said a dog, and I said yes. Any animal could be a dog, could be a cat, could be a snake. Right. Could the be first chicken. one you said was dog. Um, I agree, actually. Like I had, I had bird on my list. I think a bird would be a bad gift, or a cat. That would be a bad yeah, gift. Yeah, a cat. A I'd dog. I put on cat on our list. Yeah. I would be, me personally, I would be pumped to get a dog. Billy wanted to get me, me a dog the day after Leroy died, and it was probably going to be too soon, but I still probably would have been like, oh, sweet. It's a cute puppy. You usually learn to yeah. love the animal, animal gifts, and then you're like, oh, I can't believe, you know, unless you're a sociopath. Yeah. Right. Which Hank is. Um, no, okay. I love dogs. I just don't Do you have like the ability it. to love Hank? Do you? Or? Mm. Yes, Billy. <laughs> okay, Billy and Jake, go ahead. Your your pick. Billy, you can start off. Uh, self help books, because not mm. only okay. are they a book that you're not going to read, it's a backhanded insult. Yeah, but eventually you learn to love to to help yourself. You know, once you actually read. Hey, remember when I got you the positive thinking book? Uh, no, you got me a link to an Amazon <laughs> website. But did you hate it? <laughs> I, you didn't send me it. You didn't give me I anything. I know, just you like the texted link me a link. Itself. Yeah, I, I opened up the page and then it was like, here, buy it. And I was like, I'm not going to buy it. But thanks, Billy. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right, so self-help book. Um, yeah, PFT, I think I do. I think I okay. do because there's more into it. So I'll pick that and then you, you do this other one. Okay. All right. So our first two picks are uh, number one, uh, a gym membership, because it's the double double uh, like whammy of basically saying that you're fat and you need to get in shape, and then like the gift is you just have to go punish yourself at the gym. Um, a gym membership fucking sucks to give someone it, and to receive. It's giving you a chore that you have to do. Yeah. And Correct. that's, that's, that's a pain in the ass. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I like to hit the gym on my schedule. I don't want to feel like I'm beholden to anybody else on how much I use my gym membership. And then I certainly don't want to, chances are, if somebody's giving you a gym membership, they're also a member of that gym. And so then you're going to have to like see them in the gym and make small talk 
about the present. Mm-hmm. And then if you don't get strong and don't get in good shape, then it's like a slap in their face. It's like, oh, I guess yes. you're not using my present. I got you. Yeah, it's an insult gift that then has like just a lifespan of just torture behind it. That's our first pick. Any other Hank? Would you any think? comments from anyone? I mean, if you go to the gym, it's like not it. a bad one. But Thanks, Jake. but if you go to the gym, you probably aren't getting a gym membership. True. Like you, yep. When you get a gym membership, that means you're probably out of shape, and you're being told you're out of shape by the person who's giving you the gym. Or membership. sometimes you. Move That's to actually a new place. even a worse present. So if somebody got me yeah. a gym membership, I already have a gym membership. I would be like, I'm a real piece of shit because this person doesn't even think I go to the gym. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Double. There's no way to give someone a gym membership and have it be like, oh, that was a great exchange of gifts. Mm-hmm. Um, our okay. second pick, we're going to go homemade clothes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could oh, be a mitten. It could be a homemade sweater, probably the worst of the bunch, in my opinion. Why are you it's, kidding me? It's, it's always, it's always going to be itchy. Billy, you, you Dude, cannot sounds like you hate eye. your mom. The there, straight is face. there is love in those. So you hate have your you mom and your grandma. Have you ever gotten a needlepoint the, gift? Like needlepoint my, my gifts mom has most- never given me a sweater. <laughs> My mom Dude. would never do that. My mom is a much better gift than that. I was recently she would get me so like, who, given a- there's no There's no way in any world where giving someone a homemade clothing is better than giving them real clothing that's made, that's like actually nice. Have you ever gotten a needle-pointed belt with your name on it that they take like, take, I certainly like have months not. and years to put it, together? I, it, that, then you've never, that you've is never received you, real love. That's something you're going to look back and be like, I can't believe I wore that. I can guarantee you. But I can it, guarantee you. Okay. I mean, I think there's I a can, lot of people. I can with, guarantee you right now that I will never receive a needle pointed belt as a present. It, with my name on it. <laughs> like you're going to sleepaway camp and they got to put your name on your underwear. No, no. So that in case you lose it, they know it's Billy's belt. I have a needle yeah. point. Why, why, <laughs> why would you want a needle point? But you're like walking around. You're like, yeah, see this thing that's designed to keep myself from exposing myself. It's got my name on it. So in case I forget who I am. It's a cool pattern. That's me, down. Billy. You see that? Look, yeah, that's me, Billy. You see it on my belt? <laughs> There's a lot of love in needle in homemade clothes. I mean, maybe your family are making clothes. Those are actually you. You you're actually proving the point because the worst type of gifts are the ones that like it's the thought that counts. No, I'd rather just you give me cash. That's the best gift you can ever give someone. No one has ever been like, "Damn, I didn't want that cash." That's a fact. That's a fucking fact. All right, your guys' next pick. All right, I'm gonna. We are going to go with uh, a card with no gift in it. So sometimes oh. you just get a card and you expect you see an envelope. It's yeah. Oh, some cash or a gift card. And it's just the card. You do right. a thing where you open it up very carefully because a check yeah. might fall out the bottom. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing in there. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, a great pick. That's a great pick. Yeah. Damn. Billy and thumbs down it for what it's worth. <laughs> oh geez, sounds like just trouble in paradise over there. Yeah. <laughs> Billy, what's he did? In? He he thumbed that down. Yeah. That's a great pick, Jake. Because like Thank you're you. right, when you open up I think a card, that's the best you're like, pick so okay, far. yeah, gift certificate, some cash. I, like the only thing, I honestly, like even a check. I didn't get what he was saying. I thought he just meant a card without a gift, like a separate gift. I didn't know he meant like not money in it. So that was like the text type bad communication. Card with no gift in it is what I wrote. Down. I know, but I, I didn't realize what you meant by gift. This team's falling right. apart. No, we're doing great. Yeah, we, have some great really picks on board. we have some great picks on the board. <laughs> okay. okay. We got right. more to come. Hank, you got your, your team. Oh, wow. I'm excited. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> Bart Scott. <laughs> Billy, what state are you in? Denial. <laughs> <laughs> Pathological. Um, <laughs> I, I, this is where I, I'm in like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, Flush more of appetizers mode. Oh uh, no! <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of picks out there. Hey. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll go with an undersized article of clothing. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's homemade, like and they didn't know your body dimensions. No, but more so, <laughs> like if you, you know, it's it's much harder to return because let's say that person has a receipt, and then you have to be like, if it's a, it's a family member, you have to be like, hey. Do you have this receipt? Because I'm going to go return it because you don't even know my size. And then it's like super awkward. So you usually just take it and then never wear it. And then it's just a bad gift. 
Yeah, I, no, I, I think that's a very good pick. I for about like 10 years, I had some close family members that would uh, they would all, always buy me like a, a quarter zip or a pullover or a button up shirt. And every single time they would get me a large and every single time I would be like, I'm a medium. And they just refused to accept the fact that I was small. <laughs> they, they they it was like them they're burying their head in the sand. Like, no, it. no son. No son of mine is a beta who wears a medium. It's a large. <laughs> You'll grow. Trust me. Just give it some time. And I had to tell them every time. It's like, nope, nope, still not there yet. So now I've got a, I, I had a closet that was just filled with really nice shirts that were slightly too big for me because my family couldn't accept the fact that I was five foot eight. It's brutal. Brutal. It's tough. That's yeah. tough. I definitely have, have gone the, uh, yeah, people getting like an XL. And it's like, eh, you haven't heard. I'm, I'm a 2X now. <laughs> Things have changed. Your boy's doing well. That used to be, that used to be the sign of wealth back in the day. <laughs> Uh, okay, Hank, Team Hank, next one. Ooh, they're struggling. I just don't know what to say. I feel like we'll go with Papadias. <laughs> Whoa, that's <laughs> fucked up. Shots fired. It's like hypothetically it's your Damn. birthday. Oh. You and your girlfriend just broke up. You know, you need some support from the boys. Everyone forgets it's your birthday, and then they order Papadias and make you eat them even though you hate them. Now, had you that, told that us would by, be a that would be a bad gift. Well, hypothetically, the boys supported the f- ever living fuck out of you um, for an entire summer, and hypothetically, they also were playing the Papa Diaz commercial nonstop in our face. And hypothetically, the person you're hypothetically talking about might be a double XL, as previously stated, and Papa Diaz was the only way to fill uh, the void inside of his cavernous belly. Hypothetically, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> it, I mean, it, they weren't bad. Where did this come from? I, oh, I, they I were thought, terrible. I thought as a group, we all agree that they, there were some of them that were like above average. Yes. Yes. No, they the were ones so, with, so, so bad. I mean, have we, ch- did we ever get them again? Did we ever bring them up again? Would you ever even want to get them again? But Hank, no. what no, you fail to understand is that if you, if you advertise something during sports enough and you put it in front of our eyes on TV, we are going to have to buy it at some point to try it out. Yeah, there's like right. there's yeah. A any, literally Coke? any yeah. literally any other night. Fine, dude. I oh, still I didn't go know to you Buffalo were that big of Wild Wings. Guy. No, I'm not. It was just like I don't know. Oh, I felt just, bad. Was, They're disgusting. Yeah. Thank you, Jake. Oh, yeah. well, well, Jake it was more so. It was more like the guy who has lettuce on his steak and cheese and <laughs> diarrheas for a week. That's who you're going to take this from. He looked at Papa Dia and was like, "Oh no, I, I should check myself in the hospital." You yeah. guys, I, 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 I won't forget it. The the this kid who was like an intern at the time, I didn't even know his name at the time. We were in the gambling cave like four hours later after we'd eaten the papadillas, and he comes in and was like, Happy birthday, Hank. And there, you and you guys were like silent for like five seconds. You were like, Oh. <laughs> so that means the papadillas weren't even a birthday. Yeah, then you were so like, you Sorry for ordering papadillas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Hank, you remember when I, when I brought in two pieces of cake? For myself on your birthday, and you were like, "Oh, yep. you got cake," and I was like, "Yeah, I do. It's it's for me," and totally forgot it was your birthday. And then I had to go get you cake the next day. Yeah, it's a fun. It's a fun recurring theme. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, listen, yeah. the pa- the papadillas weren't that bad, and the fact that Jake slammed papadillas makes me actually like them more because Jake went into a TGI Fridays and called the police, being like, there's water on the tables in here. Jake's, Jake's mm-hmm. taste in mm-hmm. food, while, while it's healthy, much healthier than ours, is also quite elitist at times. Yes, you're on the wrong side of history here. If Jake's on your side when it comes to food, you're on the wrong side of history. No, I treat myself on the weekends. What do you oh, treat yeah, yourself? What you, What's you a you treat? Get, he no, gets some nice col- steak and cheese. I had Colony, <laughs> colony Grill last night on the drive home. Not even <laughs> hot oil. Yeah. I, yeah. Jake, exactly. Jake orders a, a Coke diesel, full <laughs> sugar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pours half of it out, but he yeah. still ordered it. Uh, okay. Uh, team Billy and Jake, uh, we're, this, is what, this is when you're coming back with the thing that we're, we're waiting for. So let's do it. All right. Billy, should I say Indian the one you want giving. me to say? <laughs> nope. Indian giving. A gift <laughs> that gets taken away. <laughs> What? <laughs> Jesus like Christ. Indian oh, giving. oh my god. I don't that's think you can say that. For? I that's no because it's a, <laughs> okay. like a gift that's given and then taken back. Yeah. And taken yeah. away. I don't think people say that anymore. Is that not what they say? Yeah, that's like a Marlins man. No, Marlins wait. man says that. It's called it's called commander's giving. Yeah. 
I'm looking on the Wiktionary for it. Informal, derogatory, offensive. Yeah, the to, the giving person so- giving, <laughs> to the person giving the no, gift. No, no, Billy. It's offensive no, to the person yeah. giving the gift. <laughs> right. But it's not. Exactly. But it's talking about how land was given and then taken away from Native Americans. It's not offensive to Native Americans. So why is it called, why wouldn't it be called American giving? Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's about Would it be colonial really. giving? Okay, the history behind the phrase don't – can we just bleep out every time I say that if it is offensive? No, we need the graphic. No, no yeah, no, no, no. That's said, your pick. I said, That's do you think pick. that'll play on the graphic? And he said, if they put Indian giving. Yeah, where, yeah. <laughs> one of the most – okay, wait, wait. This is the shot you called, by the what way. Meant- this is Babe Ruth calling his shot and then like a little dribbler to third base. <sighs> oh, wait. Oh, wait, I thought it was – <laughs> yeah. All oh, right, here we go. Where fuck. did the concept of Indian giving really come from? The answer to that is what white settlers thought was rudeness and a lack of generosity. The concept of an Indian gift or Indian giver traces roots back to at least the 1700s. Thomas Hutchison defined an Indian gift as a present for which an equivalent return is expected. So this is <laughs> I, it's it's to an Indian, the giving of gifts was an extension of the system of trade, and a gift was expected to be reciprocated with something of equal value. Europeans, upon encountering this practice, misunderstood it and considered it uncouth and impolite. So, yes, it's I an think, insult. I, I'm pretty sure they used this uh, like as a joke Michael Scott shouldn't have used in like the first season of The op- <laughs> o- Office when he said the N-word. No, That's how long thought, it's been like, hey, you don't say that. I thought it meant like, like the... Europeans gave the Indians like no, reservations no, no, and took them no, away. No, no. It's the- All right, so just make sure the graphic says Billy's pick in parentheses next to this one, so we just know oh, it's Billy. Is this who really this. that bad? Okay, so our next pick. <laughs> um, all right, PFT. What do we want to do? Also, that's we know not a our- gift, but you know, whatever. Well, Bill, yeah. all Billy had to do was not use a racial slur in his I Mount Rushmore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he almost didn't. He almost. Didn't. Um. All right, you PFT. Go your- what are we thinking? You want to go with yours, and I'll go with mine. Yeah. Okay. Wait. So, oh, what was? Shit. Oh. Okay. Dude, three hundred years ago, Billy, that plays like you. You don't worry about it. You're only a couple. I misunderstood. I thought it had to do with the cruelness of. So I'm going to do that one again. You're an idiot. Did I just emphasize? Yep. I like that one as our last pick. But what should we do for our third pick? Should we go more straight down the line? Like, um, you can, uh, you can either do. I think we we do that one. Okay. I just did that one. Yeah. All right. All right. Giving someone a tie. Everyone's giving their father a tie. Just a terrible gift to give and receive. It's basically like, hey, you're trapped in a fucking uh, in a job you hate. Here's a here's a like a a a semi expensive thing you can wear to change it up from Monday to Tuesday, so you know what the difference between the two days are. Because every other day melts together. A tie is a terrible gift. And if somebody gives me a tie, they're pretty much saying, "Here's something you can wear to court." Yeah. Yeah, it's just it, – it's, it's, it's another one of those insult gifts where it's like, hey, we can't think of any anything you like outside of the fact that you just have to go to work five days a week. So here it is. Here's a tie. Now, yeah. I, I would like to hear from Jake because I'm assuming he's going to be like, actually, it's a great gift. I mean, I think it depends on the profession. <laughs> like if you're someone like me who – you wear a barstool. A tie. Yeah. yeah. It was a podcaster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it depends. Like – if you're a public figure in like politics where you wear ties 24 seven, then it probably means more. But if you're a podcaster, when you never have to wear one, it's like, what am I going to do with this? So I think it depends on the person. I think that giving a tie, receiving a tie as a gift is a less than 1% chance. The person appreciates it. That's how low of a hit rate it is. Mm -hmm. Um, Our last pick is a giant decorative horse filled with Greek soldiers waiting to ransack your city. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty bad gift. Really bad gift. Pretty bad gift. And you're, uh, it's also insulting to be like, hey, you're so dumb that you're going to think that this is a peace offering, thinking that you kicked our ass in war, and next thing you know, Troy will fall. That's Great offensive gift. to Trojans. 
PFT. Yeah. Oh, you're you thinking of Trojans because your, you your dad should have worn one. Think, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Good one>. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh. No, that's offensive to all the Trojans who were slaughtered by the Greeks in that. Oh, tragedy, you're you're so. actually going to come back from that? You're going to keep yeah. going with yours after PFT <laughs> did that to you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to all the, all our listeners from Troy. Uh, yeah. No offense in, in my last pick, but I mean, even you have to understand. Also, like honorable, I'll wait for my honorable mention, but it's kind of related to that. All right, go ahead, uh, Team Jilly. Let's see what other uh, nationality or ethnicity they can offend with their last pick. I will be writing they? a blog. Yeah. I'll be writing a blog on why Game you Jake. shouldn't use that term, and it will be long and informative, and we'll set the record straight. Okay. Go ahead, your last pick. Uh, our last pick is going to be an intervention. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I mean, I kind of see where Jake's going with this because at the end of the intervention, their gift is like they give you the trip to whatever, uh, whatever like inpatient uh, therapy place that you have to go to, like a clinic that, that you get to spend time in that will be paid for you. But it is, on the other hand, Jake – it's actually the greatest gift of love of all. It's true. I might you're be trading your myself. Life. Yeah. Did, I'm on the trade block. Oh, you're, you're putting yourself on the trade block now. I, I was yeah. thinking like the, the last time we gave an intervention, the person was like, good. I actually now have way more time to blog all the things I wanted to <laughs> blog. So it could go either way. Yeah. <laughs> well said. Well said. Okay. Uh, last pick, Tank. I think it's been. I mean, you guys, you guys are running away with this. Uh, yes. We will go with a book. Good one. Mm. Yep. Good pick. Had like it on a my self-help list. book. Uh, <laughs> no, just any book. Like any book. It's like, oh, I read this. I think you might like it. Because then, you know, it's similar to gym membership. It's like. You have to probably read it or they're going to bring it up next time. Like, hey, did you read that? And it's like, no, but I'm going to. Like, it's just, it just, it just creates a, f- uh, a future awkward situation unless you take the time to actually read the book. And although people in my family love books, but me personally, not, yeah, would not it, be a good guess. It's, it's the book you get your dad on like Father's Day because you're like, oh, my dad likes sports. Let me get him this book about Jackie Robinson. Like that, or like, let me get him this book about, uh, uh, like, you know, like name any like uh, sporting event that happened like before 1970. You're like, oh, here's a book about Muhammad Ali or Babe Ruth. And it's just you're just giving him fucking homework to do. Streaming mm-hmm. really fucked up the DVD game because like that was such an easy, easy gift. Yeah. Like everyone likes movies. You can just get, you know, go to Walmart, get a couple of DVDs, maybe throw in a funny one there, like a, like a, a two dollar one. That's a joke, but like also with a good movie. But you just can't do that anymore. Yeah, I'd, I'd say the one exception to the book gift being bad is if somebody gives you, oh, the places you'll go, because people only wait to break that one out when they're like super proud of you for something that you just did. If you see, oh, the places you'll go being given to somebody at like a birthday party, it's like that person's got their life together. They're doing big things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Chicken soup for the soul or whatever the fuck. What was that book called? Yeah, there was like a bunch of different chicken soups. Yeah. Um, okay, should we do honorable mentions before we end the show and end Billy's career? Do you want do you yeah, want the two that exactly. I was gonna pick? I I I, I opted out because uh because of the team game and I, I kind of felt like these were gonna be bad. But the two I would have went if we were doing solos, I probably would have done gift cards and scratch tickets. Mm. So I like scratch, scratch tickets. Are great. Yeah, scratch yeah. tickets are great. Gift. What if you lose? Scratch tickets are great though because everyone. I mean, it's a non gift. Yeah, but. Uh, gift cards, I kind of agree with because it's like you now have to go like just give cash. That's where um, the cash comes in. I think both of those. I think both of those are are give cash. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. What else did we have? Uh, I had um, giving a two year old uh, a PS five and Hitman three, which Stu Finer did for my son. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was a tough gift, uh, but the thought that was a real true thought that counts by by Stu. Because he gave like my son a bunch of age appropriate toys, and then it was a new, a brand new PS5, and like Spider Man, Hitman Three, and like NBA 2K. I was like, he's two, but again, thought that counts because I love Stu. I had um, 
buying someone else's son or daughter a drum set mm -hmm. or like a trumpet, a really loud instrument being like, here, this is going to ruin your life with this gift that I'm giving to your son or daughter. I had, um, if they get you like an intricate board game that only they enjoy that you've never played before. And they're like, Hey, I really like this game. I think you will too. And then it takes like two days to learn the rules and then another three days to play the game. Don't like that. And then I had a scale, just a scale is a bad gift mm. too. Yep. Yep. I had also on there uh candle or cologne, like telling someone else, here's a smell. I like, that's just, it's a terrible gift to get. Like, here's a smell, use it. Um, the, uh, Oh, a court, your quarterback throwing an easy pick six terrible gift to ha to that is a gift yeah, yeah yeah when you when you're like oh that was a gift for the other team also like your goalie giving up a, a, a cheapie that's a fucking terrible feeling they call kind of wish i had said this i wish i had said this one for the graph just so it was on the graphic because memes texted this and I, me and liam were just perplexed but he said dish soap then telling the person i know how much you love to do the dishes Ooh, yeah like a vacuum mm. cleaner not not a great yeah. gift. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I one time with, almost did that with like a Roomba, and then I was like, the uh, the visual on this does not look good. Yeah, yeah. Toothpaste. Um, toothpaste? Yeah, toothpaste. Toothpaste is a bad gift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yep. Floss, giving someone floss. Mm. I actually, this was something I, I had the, like, this was a, a real time, like, I'm fucking old, because I remember when I was younger, I got socks, and I was like, this sucks. And then I, I was going to write it down. I was like, if I got socks today, I'd be pumped. Yeah, so but socks is – That's actually not – but, like, when you're a kid – Socks and underwear. Like, Yeah, mm -hmm. terrible. Yeah, when you're a kid, like, every every gift is, you know, possibly the, your favorite thing ever. And then when it's just socks, you're like, fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then once, yeah, once, once you get older, socks and underwear are life essentials. Yep. Along the same lines of the Trojan horse, uh, the Statue of Liberty was low-key a pretty shitty thing for the French to do to us. They just made this giant sculpture out of bronze, and it's like, here, you have to clean this every day or else it's going to turn green. And it's a big fucking woman, and you ha it's so big that you have to find an island to put it on. And, oh, yeah, it's also going to make you have to fight on our side in every war that happens from now until the end of eternity. So... I mean, in what in some ways it was it ended up being an effective gift by the French, but low key, I think it was a bad gift. It's literally a lawn ornament for a country. That's kind of sick, yeah. though. I think that's yeah. kind of sick. Like who? I don't like the Statue of Liberty slander. I like that. I, that big lady, was, she just she's think, freedom, baby. You see her, and you're like, damn. I think home. she's overrated. Actually, that, that's crazy. I, what communist? Yeah, but also like who who thinks to like. It's just one of those things that exists. Like I never even think about the Statue it's, of Liberty. I live like what, right by what, it. What, what national monuments do you like? Yeah. The PFT. I mean, we're, I we're like doing Mount Rushmore. Monument. Is that problematic? I like Mount, no, I, no, I didn't say it was problematic. I just said, like, if you're going to give us a giant Overrated. statue of a woman, at least put some cake in her backside. At least, like, put some low cut on her. She's just a little treat for the fellas. You, 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 haven't looked at the, you haven't looked at the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> How many beers for the Statue of Liberty? Dude, it's freedom. Back then? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah she, back she then, that's the thing. Like, you have to clean it every day. It's it, it's the worst possible material. Like if it was still like shiny, that would be sick. But no, it's green now. Green is cool. Green makes it cool. You don't see green like things like that. You don't <laughs> Fiona. see Fiona. Who? Fiona from Shrek. Yes, yeah, sure. Oh. Kermit. Okay, there we go. Name green some green so, things. <laughs> but wait, if the Statue of Liberty is so great, how many times have you guys been to been to visit her? Multiple times, uh, yeah, once or twice. I also <laughs> I see God. it like Only every day once. on a walk on my walk. Like she's fucking cool, dude. That, I, I, that, that's America. That is America. Me and Trent went in like 2013. It's messed up. You must not have relatives on Ellis Island, PFT. <laughs> oh, I don't damn, know. roasted. Damn. <laughs> I don't know where my parents, where my weird, relatives came from. One of the weirdest from. roasts ever, bro. <laughs> You're so fucking lame. Billy's ancestors actually were were from here, so that's why it's not problematic for him to say that. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's true. I do have more than Elizabeth Warren, but not enough to yeah. rep that. Yeah. All right. I got, there we go. I'm, you're 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 Brokahannes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Let's do numbers and get out of here before Billy yeah. ruins this whole podcast franchise dude how, how do i get Six. can we like bleep this right. like is this like really bad no no uh 27 <laughs> Six. 27 seven hank 69 7 58 
I don't. 51. Oh. Wednesday, takeies. Be there. Greatest ep- tech takeies we've ever done. Oh, 51's new. 51's new. Oh, scoring got oh, Let's go. Oh, is it prime? Huge. But doesn't oh, no. have an asterisk. Like yeah, it has an asterisk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we still have 6, 26, 27, 29, and 78. So we're down to five numbers. Incredible. Do we have the Hank, the Hank cat bet thing? Or was that never agreed? No, because he's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I got him Papa Diaz for his birthday. I can't say anything else. All right. We'll see everyone Wednesday. Fair, fair Love horses you guys. cause the most property damage out of any invasive species in North America. Love you guys.